as we dive into Under the Skin of Eternity, um, the latest record by Awaken Providence through Unique Leader Records, such an amazing record. It's a story, and DeAndre has confirmed that for us on both, like, you know, personal level and narrative levels with this very, very, uh, um, I don't even know, just romantic renaissance style cover by the legend himself, Kalen Stokerman's, as well as the logo, which fucking looks amazing. Um, such a great album. Definitely going to be adding it to my top 10. Um, as we get started, as we truly descend under the skin and kind of like, you know, peel open the skin, we start to see the the, the tissue underneath the skin tissue. Um, whoever wishes to go ahead and just provide us a back of the book summary for what this album uh, is supposed to be telling us, what the, the stories it's trying to tell us. Um, I, I can, I can start and then, um, I know Adam will definitely have some stuff, uh, apart from, 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 ah, excuse me, from some of the stuff I'm saying. And, and of okay. course his own, um, the album is, uh, it's a, it's a very fantastic version of like just where I was at the time, um, where, you know, where I was with, with my personal life and everything else and everything dealing with anxiety for the for the first time which before that i was a person who who ignorantly said that you can control anxiety and and it's all in your head um it's not <laughs> uh it definitely is is it was not as simple dealing with and 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 eventually working on it and getting it under control is much harder than than it uh than it definitely seems like it is Yes. Um, just you know, I, 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 the album had a a very, very, very dark idea um, when it started, um, but I felt I, I needed to pull it back a little bit. Um, yes. long, long story short, it was intended to be, and I don't know if I can say the s word here. Mm -hmm. um, it was intended to be a kind of like a story of depression anxiety and the things that come with that and um kind of like being alone being kind of just in your head yes um being as adam said being your worst critic but also being very like bad to yourself um and and really just not allowing yourself to be happy or allowing yourself to to um uh, thrive i guess and grow Yes. Um, maybe made for whatever reason, you know, and for me, mm -hmm. I, I have my reasons for, for, for feeling that feeling those feelings, which, you know, of course th those will stay with me. Um, but that's essentially what it was, what it was based around. The album was really, really based around, um, um, again, the, the sensitive topic of the S word. I don't want to, yes. I'm not going to say it cause I'm not really sure how, how some of that stuff works, uh, in, a, in, in, you know, recorded media, but right. Of course. Um, it, it was, it was kind of like my, my dealings with that and thoughts and, and all that kind of stuff like that and where that stuff comes into play so much. So the, um, an odyssey through the river, um, not to, not to jump too quickly into the, to the de deconstruction, but an odyssey of the, in, through the river actually started, um, with a very, very dark idea, um, which I, I I'll, I'll leave that not uh, uh not putting that too, too, too out there yeah it, it it had a different um because i'm i'm a huge fan of sound design and um and score and cinema sound and all that kind yes. of stuff which i don't know if that's if that's obvious but um it, I, I i i've been kind of like you go back to insidious for example the very intro to insidious uh the song uh, song doom is it's that's just sound design that i just was in the studio working and adding and working, adding yeah. part, taking this, taking this crying and pitching it and doing this, that, and third, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I, I was creating a visual, um, I was creating a visual through audio with the original version of an Odyssey through the river, but it just, it was too far to, for me, um, mm. to put out at least. Um, and there's also some some there is also some reference to that in uh, Weep into the Abyss for It Hears You Not, which again we'll talk more about later. But of course. Um, that also has some more of that context as well. But it I, it's still there, but I just pulled it back like really far because yes. um, I didn't want I didn't want it to be too uh, out and in your face. Um, so I kind of just pulled back pulled back some of that stuff. But um, that's essentially kind of like the concept of the album from a from a very uh, from a very like non-direct way 
Um, yes. Because when you read the when you read the lyrics, uh, you know, I, I did my best at trying to tell that story through uh, metaphor or imagery or something like that. So it's not so very clear. For example, like the 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 Trinity, the tribunal, the the wraith, the 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 river, the field, like all of those are different concepts that that I approached Adam with when I when, when it was like when I was writing the songs, um, I was naming them individually based on those com- concepts. So it was, they okay. were uh, the original version of the album was intended to be um, uh, titled "The Field, The River, The The Abyss, The Ooh. The City." Like they had different. Like each song was named after a different concept, a different conceptual part of the album yes. um, or a different part of the story, um, which the short version of the story is it's there's a, the whole thing is meant to take place in your head. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, there's this, this kind of like, there's a Trinity called the Trinity, yes. um, which is the, the abyss, the, um, oh shit, the horror, the terror and the abyss. Okay. Um, so if you listen through the album, you'll hear that come up a bunch of times. Obviously, yes. the horror of the old gods mm-hmm. weep into the abyss, like all that stuff. Like all the all the names and all that stuff continue to stay within the record. Um, right. Wraith, like all that stuff, and these are all just different words and names to um, refer to these different concepts of mental health or yes. different concepts of, of transitional periods or liminal spaces, for example. Um, so the river, for example, was the, is the portal to the field. Yes. And those are just, those are just, um, different ways to say, um, when you die, for example, Mm -hmm. go from one place to another place to another place. Um, and then from there, I took the, the more, um, darker concepts that I was talking about before, um, that were more personal. And then I assigned, um, those different uh, names and different um, different words and stuff to those different pieces. Um, to I'm not going to go as far as to say create an allure or create a create something interesting to to, to look at. But yes. to be quite honest, is just to kind of kind of hide the the the. It's a, the, it's a me- you know for as a metaphor, like, yeah. Like, for for something deeper, like it, it's almost like um, a good way to describe it is. Uh, uh, I used to uh, how people cover up traumatic things mm-hmm. with uh, with something else, and mm-hmm. I, I used to work with this guy who legitimately believed he was Goku, and uh, I both I've been I was told the reason for that is like he had a lot of child abuse, mm-hmm. and um, he used Dragon Ball Z to like escape it. So uh, it was sort of like just miraging what yes. was really going on. And that's sort of mm-hmm. almost like what every song does. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I That's why they all had those original names. Yeah. I, I also liked the river and the whole afterlife aspect to it because um, like in a lot of cultures and religions, it's almost like universally that um, – there is some sort of river to guide you to the yep. other, some sort of body of water yeah. that is involved yeah. with a crossing over. So mm-hmm. it was very, we didn't, that, it was very specific, but also very vague at the same time. Yeah. That's so, why I feel like when you listen, when you listen to the album, you'll hear a lot of reference to water. Yes. Um, both lyrically as well as sound design wise, like the song, like the album starts with rain and mm-hmm. it ends, it ends with, uh, oh no. It doesn't end with rain. Oh, yes, it does. I remember. I think it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there's, there's some dripping happening. There's different references to water throughout the album. Right. Um, there's some lyrical references to it as well. And then, like, there's a lot of... Uh, we... we uh, I already wanted to do it, and then Adam brought a different um, a different interpretation to it, which is, um, you know, one of the one of the reasons why, we're, why me and him work well together is I I'll have whatever the primary idea or the pr- primary vision is. I'll have things written out or whatever, yes. whatever. And then um, Adam will introduce a, a different concept that I haven't thought of. Right. Uh, something that he knows from, from, from his, his research of different things or his particular interests. Yes. Um, and then I'll do the, I'll do some more uh, research on that particular thing and find ways that it works within, within whatever my original vision was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, then there you go. Now we have this completed idea. 
Yes. Um, so like, you know, obviously since we're, since we're talking about it, uh, we can kind of jump into Odyssey. I am so very excited for this album. And I have merch that I'm pretty sure was delivered to an old address. <laughs> so. Also featuring Netflix and chill, Barry and Ben Jerry's. Let's go. Let's go. Yes, sir. Um, Odyssey was originally called The River. Um, and if memory serves me correctly, I could uh, actually, no. Odyssey always started with Clean Vogel, which uh, I'm just going to, um, I, I decided um, after TBS TBM that I have to commit to it, as what I was saying earlier. I have to commit to it because if I don't commit to it, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to happen the way I want it to. And it's going to take, it's going to be too much of a burn, a slow burn to get to it. Or yes. people aren't going to like, uh, I was like, you know, who gives a shit, dude? At the end it's of the day, my this, band, bro. <laughs> it's, it's not, honestly, dude, it's not even that. It, it really was, this album has a deep emotional connection. I have a deep emotional connection to this album. Good. And um, I, I, Adam does too. You know, like it, it's, it, it was a lot of hours sitting in this room or, well, technically, the other room before I moved studios, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of hours sitting, sitting in these different rooms or, or at my old apartment, for example, of just like trying to figure these songs out and rewriting yes. and figuring this out and figuring that out. And then finally just saying like, you know what, the, the best way, cause I, I also do, I do some screaming on the album too, but mm -hmm. I, there, there was no, there's no other way to start this album um, to me with, with the particular concepts and the particular connection that we have to it other than doing what I feel is one of the most emotional, one of the most emotional forms of art or, or portraying your art is singing. Yes. And, and to me, it was the, you know, the, the particular emotion that was there in those, in the, in, in the words that are in that part, you know, it was a lot of like stuff that I've felt over the years and just kind yes. of like the, the different parts of kind of just like, for lack of a better term, calling out, calling out uh like god for example and like yes not calling out god in the typical metal way of fuck god bleh, like not that shit but literally like i feel that the thing because not as heavily as adam but when i was younger i i was brought up in the catholic church mm -hmm. um but as i got older and things kept happening to me it was i feel more and more distant from this thing because i don't understand why this thing keeps allowing these things to happen Yes, and then it started to change, and that's why you have like that. That there's a lyric that's in the uh, in in the beginning, which which is um, uh, God has forgotten my right, you know, and it's like it's like you, you you as someone you know coming up in the Catholic Church the way that I did, it was yes. We keep going to church every Sunday. We keep doing communion. We do this offering. We do that offering. We do this. Yes. We do that. And a third, all this. Like so why that, that that this that this so that this thing will forever smile down upon you in the center of blah. And I'm like, okay, but then why did my, you know, why did my grandmother die out of nowhere for absolutely no reason? And no one can explain mm -hmm. why. Yeah. You know, it's like that, like as a, to a kid, it's like, that doesn't make any sense. You're telling yeah. me that, that, that it's a good thing that this happened, but I, I you know, there's no, there's no, what's the good thing, you know, like, like, I'm, I'm watching yeah. my mother fucking like just descend into, into sadness because of this. Mm -hmm. Um, How can you tell me that, you know, this, so it's like, Different stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, this is, yes. that happened to me when I was in 2004. I was a kid, you know, mm -hmm. or I was a kid. But that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. So, like, so when I when I say, like, this album is deeply connected, I mean that, you know? Yes. Um, and, you know, I, I, I've been saying it to my, my girlfriend's not in the metal world at all. She's getting into it now because of being in the relationship, being in this relationship. Um, and she even said that she's like, you, you, she's like, I see the risk you take, you're taking with putting, like, actual clean singing yes uh in the very beginning of a death metal record you know mm -hmm. um but yeah i i in my in the in the booklet of eternity i i thanked three people specifically and that was mm -hmm. adam Je jesse and jordan because they trusted me to fucking to with a lot of these crazy ideas and one of yes. those crazy ideas is putting clean sync like legit ass clean, clean sync and scene. harmonies and and all that kind of shit into a yeah. death metal record but that's because honestly dude it made sense it makes mm -hmm. sense for it to be there from a from a lyrical perspective a, a conceptual perspective an emotional perspective it's supposed yes. to be there mm -hmm. uh so like you know that that's where that comes from as far as like the 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 story that storyline because uh you know that 
that song specifically is supposed to be the beginning of the end. Mm. Um, and that that's that's where like the more fantastic part of the story or the fantastical part of the story kicks in, where the main character or the prime or that that particular character um, is essentially, uh, you know, that is their their um, again, I'm just to kind of come out with it is that's the point in the story where that person is supposed to be taking their life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, wow, I'm <laughs> getting choked up talking about it. Um, that's where that comes from, and that's why um, when the when the song kicks in the way that it does, and when Adam comes into it, yes, it's that immediate switch because it's meant to it's meant to convey that that sense of calm is not it's mm-hmm. not it's not a a happy calm. You know, it, it can end abruptly. Yes, and that's like that's what that was. It was like I, I remember uh, uh, writing it, and originally it wasn't an orchestra; it was originally guitar. Um, and I I wrote, wrote the idea. I sent it to Adam. I was like, "Dog, I I need you to send me a vocal. I I need you to send me a vocal. Record it however you can. I just need you to say this one word, mm-hmm. um, which is light." I was like, "I just need you to say word light." Oh. He sent it to me. I I worked on the part and I cleaned up all the vocal ideas. I did all the stuff, and then I had and then I just had that just come in really strong because I needed to hear if it was gonna work. Yes, because um, in my head it sounded cool. It was like, all right, yeah, this is gonna be dope. Really soft intro into this really mean, evil, heavy part. Yeah, uh, but that was before the lyrics were written. And then mm. once I started writing, once I started writing the lyrics, then it started to then it started to take shape. And it was, it was then it became the emotional roller coaster that it became. You know, yes, because um, that that song is essentially the the overture, which is why it's called an Odyssey through the River Overture. Uh, right. It is the it is the start, and it's telling you the emotional context of the album. Right. Uh, you know, before we before we even get into it, you know, just like this is what you're getting into. It's going to be heavy, yeah. It's going to be sad, um, yes. But it's also going to have you know a bleak feeling. You know, I, I don't yeah. I don't want I, I don't want it to be uplifting. I don't want it to be no. you know I don't want it to be evil. I want it to be I want it to be this album. I wanted this album to feel i want you to feel something that's yeah yeah exactly it's like I, I i said to adam well you know when we before before the, any of the lyrics were written before any of the concepts were there just i think it was um horror of the old gods and i think we are eternity were the first two songs written and then when i started um odyssey i remember saying to adam I was like the whole i need this album to feel melancholy and just 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 heavy but emotionally it works, heavy. It works so yeah. well man like i like it's unfortunate to say but like some of the best music just emerges from tragedy and just terrible times in your life i know my first song that's about some pretty shitty things that happened very personal to me and it's mixed with heavy and clean singing so it's like the same way that you're explaining it it allows for that emotion to be in there and it just works so well because an odyssey through the river like the first time i listened to it i'm like okay so i'm literally just imagining the river sticks and in greek mythology it's like that's where that's how you go into the afterlife when vikings die in real life you know they have that massive memorial they're put in the boat and someone shoots a flaming arrow they set a blaze and then they they fade into the ocean almost the same exact way and I don't even know. It's just a great way to start a record. One, two, reminds me of the Odyssey, as I've said before. And three, um, especially when you're talking about um, taking your own life, because the, the Royal S word, I, I agree with you that um, when it when it comes to that, it's like it's it's almost like the calm that the album starts out with is just like, man, I'm so tired. I'm exhausted. I'm drained. And then just like when it finally happens, it's like, that's, that's the heaviness is a good depiction of your surrounding loved ones. They're like, fuck. And you know, that and like, it gets intense. And mm-hmm. like, then we get started on this journey um, of like getting into that mindset and just understanding what's going on or as what I'm kind of getting the impression from on the album cover um, I almost thought that this this whole album was meant to be like Lucifer taking back control over heaven or something. Um, and that, you know, that that's a redemption cycle. Even though this terrible thing happened, you're like, 
enough. And then you're taking charge, you're putting the effort in. And unfortunately, with the idea of um, someone taking their own life, it's a little bit more uh, um, melancholy. It's it's grieving. It's not like enough, do it. And then mm-hmm. everybody else is like enough. It's like enough. And then just silence. Yeah. And it's intense. Yeah. Um, so I, I didn't want to take that away from you. Um, no, as, you're as good. Yeah, that, commentary. You, you, yeah, dude, you nailed it. You nailed it. You know, it's, it's, mm-hmm. um, yeah, good, dude. Oh, no, I was going to say, um, you know, that's when it starts to get to that fantastical part of um, the album with Horror of the Old Gods. Right. Uh, which is a, I think it's like a, a really good segue into the rest of, of everything that happens thus far, like um, from there on. And uh it's honestly one of my favorite songs, and I know it's going to be uh, fucking ass beater live because um, it's just so upbeat and so fun. Yeah, that that's what I remember describing it as. Like, this is a fun song. Like, yeah. this is going to yeah. be really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to play that one live as well. But yeah, um, it was. Sorry, yeah. good. No, no, you're good. Um, the before before we moved on because you, you mentioned the artwork, I wanted to say uh, with the artwork too, like that was um, this this like kind of like off idea I had for a long time about um, using uh, Baroque era like paintings um, as as the reference for like a lot of just like just like these really like dark old um, you know like pieces of art that I that I've always been been a fan of and just different different. Uh, painters and stuff from like the 1800s and, and 1700s and stuff like that so i sent yeah. like a bunch of this stuff to um to kaylin and i told him i was like look this is what i'm this is what i want this is what i want to see i need to see um a one character struggling against another one being surrounded by other people that are that are not not necessarily oblivious to what's happening but they don't fully understand what's happening they don't Ooh. understand that they are part they are part of it they are a part of it but they don't see how um yeah. that's why when you look at the artwork there's no real it's not a fight there's no, no um there's no like you know fucking sword and uh, this guy's cutting down this other guy or 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 you know there's not fire engulfing everybody or, or all the you know the typical stuff that would kind of tell you very obviously hey this is about the devil doing x you know there is if you look at the when you look at the artwork at the bottom of the artwork there is like that orange hue of almost like there is fire almost um but again i didn't want it to go as far as to be like all of these people in hell which is why they're flying Mm -hmm. um which is also why it's in a sky yes um and then the other piece of it being the one character is holding on to the other character by some by just that that claw yes he's not holding him personally which that's a reference to um to terror or tiamo legati del terrore Okay. Or we are bound. We are bound by terror. We are bound by um, terror, we'll, right? Yeah, we'll we'll get to that too. Um, but the artwork is the different pieces of the artwork are refer, referring to different parts parts of the album or different concepts within the album. Um, yes. And that was just like I, I I need to be able to because that's how I work and I you know Adam can explain this as well because I tell him I me and him were we were on the phone what two days ago dude like and I was just talking to him about some of the news some of the new stuff. And I work from images in my head. Like I just I see an idea, or I see, or I think of a word, or or a title, or something, and yeah. that's what I work to. You know, I'll write a song, or I'll write the lyrics, or I'll write a vocal part, or whatever to that. Yes. So when it was when it came time to work on the album, me and Kay, me and Caitlin were just back and forth constantly. They'll send me a reference, like a quick draw. I'm like, all right, let's work on this idea, or they'll send me something else. All right, cool, that's dope. Like a lot of that because it was this is what I see in my head when I think of the album. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, moving back to this to the album itself, uh, horror. That's a uh, like Adam said. That was that was actually that song was written around the the, the TBS TBM era, which is why okay. it kind of feels like that 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 yeah. album a little bit. Um, that song was written around that time. It was like I, I really wanted, like like Adam said, I wanted to just write an ass beater. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to write an ass beater, and that that song that song also had a clean clean chorus on it. Mm-hmm. Didn't fucking work. I just mm-hmm. kept trying to make it work, but I once I realized that I kept trying to make it work, that's when I was like, "All right, I got to scrap that idea." Um, and and when we we uh, we came up with that that um, 
the way the horror of the old gods like that yeah. that kind of like that vibe so like that fun shit, man that shit was just Ugh. like it's super catchy it just it fits with the groove it has that really like upbeat feel to it yes um, it's still a chorus mm. but it just it, it hits you in the face constantly um and and fun small fact to it since that wasn't originally the idea and also adam lives in florida um it was like we were finishing the we were still going through the mix phase and like i was still doing some editing and and yeah. like sending it to the sending it to the guys who was mixing it um and i hit up adam randomly like the middle of the night i was like yo dude i was like is it possible within the next like two days can you record two vocals i just need two words i was like i just need you to do two words because i'm trying to make this course work i need to make right. this course work because the version that we had that we were listening to with cleans didn't work right. i have an idea but i just i need two words and i can i can do it but if not i get it i can make it. but unfortunately it was too late too the timing was not it was not enough time <laughs> um so i ended up i did some studio magic and i made mm -hmm. it work uh and that chorus ended up working out the way that it did and then um uh, you know, and then obviously, like uh, over over time, also that the whole ending breakdown was originally just filled with guitars and like ambient mm. guitars. But then once I started doing all the or orchestral stuff in God Killer, and yes. seeing how well it worked um, while I was writing it, I was like, you know what? I'll I'll go through. I'll clean up some of the or because it had orchestral elements in it, but it wasn't really that that heavy yet. No, um, no, because I. But I. But then I once I did God Killer, I kind of I. I committed to it more than I did in uh, Eternity, so that that whole ending just became that yeah. just like apocalyptic monster that it is. And then uh, I Adam just fucking went ultra ham sandwich on it. Oh, yeah, uh, fucking and Arby's then, level, bro. <laughs> one of my favorite parts of that whole entire breakdown, Adam. I love your vocals. You're a phenomenal vocalist. My favorite part of that breakdown is, is the whisper. I think that's the heaviest yes. part of that. Breakdown. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, hey, I'm still the, the whisper, motherfucker. <laughs> what, what'd you say? I said, I'm still the one who did the whisper, though. I know. Technically, <laughs> technically speaking, we both did it. And there's, a, there's, a secret, there's a secret one that's in there. There's like a little, uh, there's a reverb version of it that's in it. Um, I, I did it. I just threw it in there. I was like, I, I need, I need uh, like an extra tone to this little tail. <laughs> So it's it in there. It's real so slight. Well, it's real man. slight. All right. But it's, All right. It's, it's definitely you. There's no question. <laughs> no, it's such a fun track. And like, I think speaking for Awakened Providence currently, that is definitely the song that people are um, like, hey, do you know that song that goes, oh, 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 God. Oh, no. and like, oh yeah, Awakened Providence, for the old gods. So like, yeah, that's the one. Like, that's the song for you guys right now. I, I think. Um, yeah. Just that song that you, you think of. And you're like, what? What is that song? You know, obviously, I just, I just said that, but such a yeah. fun mm -hmm. song. And like, I think that happens to be the spookiest song on the record. But that's also what really? makes it so fun. Yeah, because I, I don't know. Maybe this is head cannon, but I remember the we like in the background of that song, mm. and I'm like, oh, because I'm like a, a big fan of spooky music. Like that's my whole fucking lifestyle right now. You can see the, you can actually see the webs a little bit. Webs, yeah. Yeah, freaking, they're, they're supposed to be glow in the dark too. Damn them, they weren't. Um, but I love spooky shit. So when I heard that, and I, I, I think I remember hearing like some type of weird spooky, like horny spooky synth in the background. Maybe I'm remembering that incorrectly. But mm. if not, it would work pretty well for that. And maybe <laughs> that's maybe that's the fucking head cannon. Is I'm like, this would go really well with spooky synths. But good God, man, I, I remember that when that song first came out. And like I remember the editing process for the for the reaction for that song, and I'm like, this is a fucking bot, bro. Like I don't mind taking three hours to edit this or however long I took because I I edit mm. um, the videos while I work. But um, so obviously we 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 all here in session love the song. Um, let's go ahead and uh, dig a little bit under the 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 lyrical process and like the 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 end product of what you ended up entailing for this. Uh, compared to the rest of the record, per se. Um, horror 
it was um that's kind of like the the let's at least start to talk about the concepts um i don't i didn't want to go too deep into anything yet like we just we can right. we we already kind of like slapped you with this very like intricate concept in the in in odyssey between the cleans and the and the and the um and the uh the screaming vocal parts and like when you when you like look at the lyrics for those for those two sections like they're they're dramatically different but they have a very very similar concept as far as what they're dealing with um and then in horror it was let me start to introduce these things to you you know like let, let's start talking about this stuff so the old gods for example the trinity tribunal the field the river all that kind of stuff um let's just start you know planting the seed so to be quite transparent that song yes it does fit the story yes it's a part of the story yes it has a lot to do with it but that was more for the song than it was anything else yes um because it was like this song is fucking this song is just heavy it's just pissed yeah. off mm-hmm. so let's just be pissed off and heavy you know um and the, the lyrical content fits with that. Um, actually, actually, I should pull the lyrics up while we're talking because it would make it even <laughs> easier to remember them. Um, but uh, that song definitely has, um, you know, the the intro, for example, the uh, we're made to conceive and spin the lore. Like yes. that, that's the first lyric in the song, and that that is essentially just to say, like, hey, bro. You don't know. You don't know what's happening right now. Yeah. You know, like, let me you, guide these, you though. <laughs> yeah, you. We'll get there. But you, because the other thing that I that I that I wanted to do with this, like from a lyrical perspective, um, was to kind of play play with perspective a lot. Yes. Not to say perspective a, bit, a bunch of times in a row, but play with perspective. So like this song and uh, we are eternity are from the perspective of the uh, the Trinity. Okay. Um, whereas. Um, Odyssey is from, from, I'm gonna say my perspective and Adam's perspective, yes. which plot twist is the same perspective. Um, but again, we'll get there. Um, yes. <laughs> where Horror of the Old Gods, it was from the perspective of the of the Trinity and and like kind of like starting to plant those seeds of like, hey, this is what we're dealing with. This is what we're talking about. Because um, you you know when we get to when we get to I'm looking at the lyrics and there I have like in parentheses good chorus I deleted, <laughs> I, I deleted the bad chorus and i just put in good chorus which hopefully it didn't end up on the album that way but who knows also fun um, fact uh the most streamed song on spotify with 111,899 streams horror yeah horror mm-hmm. wow yeah Jesus wow Christ, man. I, sometimes i i look at the the spotify like artist thing every now and then and those numbers kind of scare me Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I you know I can only imagine what it is for for other bands, but um, so yeah, at, at the at the in that big breakdown, um, there's the the lyrics. So we spread the plague. Uh, this ritual will break will break in, cracking your cerebe- cerebellum through the anxiety uh, from the anxiety, right. uh, because that that's like I said, like that's the that's the thing. I'm starting to now tell you like these things are names for other things. Yes, you know. So it's like the the old gods is just your old your your former way of thinking your former psyche, ah. uh, and what what you thought you what you thought you were or what you or who you thought you were, um, and that's uh, the horror of the old gods is just being like where your where you thought your mind is and how you how you think of yourself then with yes. the the new your new kind of way of thinking which is the not realization really that good you know yeah it's just like I I. Oh my god, I I was so I was so happy, I was so positive, blah blah blah, yeah, yeah. and now I'm this, you know what I mean? Like now yeah. I'm now I am my anxiety, you know? Right. Um, and then directly after, and I'm looking at it, it's like crippling everything, you know? It's just <laughs> like no matter what you whatever like again that weight and realizing that weight of what what uh you know what that anxiety means to you, you know? And that's and I feel like that's something that as personal as as, as personal as the album is to us um that's something that we've all dealt with you know what i mean like you look at the metal community you know we all deal with stuff you know and that's one of the reasons one of the things that brings us closer to this community or brings yes. us closer to the music is that we all deal with something yeah. and this is this is a, a different outlet for that some of us some of us create that music and that's our outlet and some of us consume that music which a lot of yes. us do both but mm-hmm. uh, we consume that and that's our outlet you know yes so like something like that for example like 
it's the lyric is uh crippling everything you lock deep down inside your memory you know like that's that's what it that's what that song is about you know what i mean right. it's it's starting that process and it's a heavy song and it, we're like this is gonna be a heavy concept yeah. right exactly and it, dude anxiety has definitely been uh my main antagonist per se so definitely something i can relate to just crippling panic attacks and shit even recently with all my success and all of my um at least compared to before all of my efforts coming into fruition every now and then just like it literally crumbles you down it's like what's going on why is this happening it's like it eh, doesn't matter why it's happening you have anxiety motherfucker how are you gonna <laughs> do it and it's just it sucks but you know as as long as you're surrounded by good people and you have like the right mindset and you're doing as as well as you can for yourself that's kind of like how i operate like i could easily be on certain medications and stuff but instead i'm like one day my efforts will pay off and I will feel more confident about myself or, you know, anything like that. And therefore, um, speaking more specifically about horror of the old gods, um, when I first listened to this and now I'm getting, you know, more insight upon the song, it's almost like religiously speaking, most religions are headcanon. So it's like, you might as well kill off the old gods that are your former, um, ideologies maybe uh, your naivety as some people would like to call it because they're like huh, you're just naive you don't know how how painful life can get it's like well no i absorb that pain i absorb that m misery um for example my project blind without our failures the, the name itself is just like we are blind without our failures right so it's mm -hmm. like without those failures without those tropes without you stumbling and just actually eating a pile of mud you don't really know what pain is. You don't really know what misery or any of that is. But once you do, it's up to you to decide whether or not, you know, you make that next step and just continue going on with that knowledge in your head. Therefore, then you are blind. You continue to be blind if you wish to. But at least now it's without your failures. Um, and with Horror of the Old Gods, it's like you might as well try to do your best to kill off the old gods that happen to be your former ideology and... Like, what now? That's the most, like, crippling question I ask myself every now and then is just, what now? So it's like, what what then are you doing despite the horror of the old gods? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I really, I really like, see, like, that, this is the type of thing that I find very interesting because it's like, I, I, as someone who, who I spent all my time in this room and writing in this and other, I don't really get to hear uh mm. other people's interpretations of, of the songs and that's my first time hearing an, an interpretation of this song uh and that that's you know i i it, it always interests me because i know where my head was when, when i mm. when i wrote this stuff or i know where where our head was when we were in here working on the lyrics or working on the ideas or working yeah. on the parts um and then like knowing what at what both adam and i said we were not gonna do and then hearing what people kind of like think about the songs and then uh, like I, I, it's on the, it's on the, it's a comment thread on one of the videos, and they're like going in on what it actually means and and <laughs> what the, what we're saying and this and that. Third. And I'm like, you guys couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely, way man. Off, way off base. <laughs> way off. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Adam, Adam what, what do you what do you guys to say about horror? Um. I just really like uh, the concept of like paganism, whether it be like heathenism or, you know, what counter you know, uh, polytheistic. Uh, Poly religion. Polytheism. That's what you're yeah. trying to get to. There you go. Um, I just think it's really cool. I, like there's a lot of like subtle hints at like norse mythology and like the norse religion known as heathenism uh that would that would be ossature by the way sorry didn't mean to interrupt you but the, huh? the term would the term would be ossature that's a norse paganism that's actually what i participated in that, myself yeah i mean i i would <laughs> there there's different sects Def uh, yeah, definitely. But yeah, I I, I, lo I love whenever anything Norse comes up. It's my favorite thing to see how Adam responds. <laughs> that, I love it. I wouldn't identify with that just because that specific name. I'm not speaking on any of the people you know, but that specific section of heathenism has had like a lot of uh, 
slandered. But, All right, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying you're you're like a part of of that or anything. I I'm just saying. I, it's I your don't. your reason for I'm your very, for separating yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's it's my own reason. Right. Um, absolutely. But yeah, yeah. There's a lot of um, inspiration in there. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just really like anything like that. It's really cool. I noticed two, uh, two of the runes that you got done um, yeah. in, in some of the yeah, recent music videos. Elder I love Futhark to see that. And some younger Futhark, and then I have Hugin and Moonin on uh, on the sides. And then uh, you can't see it because my head isn't shaved. But in between where their wings meet, <clears throat> um, I have Vegas here, like right on the back of my head. Yo. Yeah, there's like these. Are you have Idris on your, on your neck right here, too? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Eat yourself, and then underneath it, you can't see it unless I shave. It's just like a cool little trinity knot underneath my chin. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, uh, anytime, I love, anytime I got Norse questions or Norse theory ideas that I want to try to incorporate, I'm like, Adam, how does this do? I, does this work? <laughs> <laughs> like, can I use this particular idea? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, I, I, yeah, Adam's my Norse guy. Respect, man. That's cool. I didn't know that about you. I yeah, I have plenty more conversations honest, now. <laughs> I know I like wear it, but mm. most people just don't know, so it's very easy to not get into conversation about it with people because yeah. they're like, "Oh, what is that?" And you're like, "Oh, it's Elder Futhark runes," and they're like, "Okay, <laughs> nice." <laughs> <laughs> But like when you do meet someone who who does know what they're talking about and and can associate with you, then it's like I don't know if I want to get too deep into this right now. <laughs> but, you know, Nerd out, yeah. Dude, definitely but, a conversation for another time. We got to talk about that shit, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, I I think uh, we both were able to just really incorporate. Um, influences and interests and things we just really identified with whether it be like religious or mythically or lore from our favorite franchise of something or yes you know we just really wanted to build this world but not a specific thing you know? yes yeah we didn't we didn't we didn't and this this is kind of i we kind of unintentionally started talking about the album again as a whole um well we'll, we'll jump to uh we are eternity <laughs> after but um we we really didn't want to of course we did this after we put out god killer but we didn't want to make another run-of-the-mill death metal or deathcore record of you know fuck god we're gonna do this we're gonna fucking cut god's head off and all this stuff even though we <laughs> literally did that in the other song but uh, <laughs> you know it's it's like we we were we wanted to write an album that that you know like uh, I, you know, I'll, I'll go. I'll actually, I'll, I'll rephrase that. I wanted to write an album that meant something, and it meant more than the typical, you know, stuff that you're going to write an album about. You know, or I wanted to write an album about something that people do write albums about, but I didn't want it to end happy. You know, I, right. I didn't want it to be something fun and positive. You know, like when you get to the end of the album, it's actually the, the end of the album is a sad part of the album. It's, right it's, nothing nothing positive happened you know mm -hmm. um and it's it's that's why you know also why the album's called eternity it's like these decisions are eternal these decisions don't change right you know they 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 will be what they that decision whatever it is will be what it is forever right um and you know that that doesn't have to be as heavy as as you know the 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 s word it doesn't have to be that heavy it could be as, as simple as anything else really is whatever you whatever you attach to it of course yes um whatever your interpretation of it, of it uh, whatever your interpretation of it of course and that's why um looking at the lyrics you know there's some stuff in there that was written just because it sounded cool like mm. there's a there's a there's a section in, in um uh i think it's in eldritch which we'll get to it's it's one of my favorite things that i've ever 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 put on paper because <laughs> it just it just it, it was like this simple idea and i was like this this is what we're talking about let's use that you know but we'll we'll get to that uh we'll get yes, to that later but um we are eternity is on the docket
looking at the leer is looking at the leer. Okay. Um, the introduction yeah. to our characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, 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 other than other than Odyssey, this one is is the introduction of of the connection of the Trinity as well as our characters. Okay. Um, and kind of showing, uh, it's not until Wraith that really stuff, 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 uh, I'm sorry, not Wraith, um, terror stuff starts to really come about. Um, but, uh, We Are Eternity was the second song written for the album. And that one is, um, also still kind of has some semblance of TBS attached to it. It's a little further removed from TBS, TBM, but okay. it still has a touch of it because it was still written kind of not too long after horror. Uh, okay. but uh, from a musical perspective uh, but from a lyrical perspective it was this idea that me and Adam had it's a very simple idea of like how can we just wanted to start a song that started with vocals uh, and and that that the lyric of incite the ritual to sever the flesh that that lyric changed a bunch of times um, but we landed on on that because um, it just it it really helps kind of continue that concept and that idea which we come to later as well because you'll start to learn that this this album like the mcu is very very interconnected <laughs> a lot of saying one thing over here that doesn't mean anything yet until you get over here then that I means like everything that. It's like oh this now makes sense because this thing is, yeah it's a lot of that stuff um, i just i like that form of storytelling i do um, too where you kind of you kind of start in one place and then you get somewhere else and you're not fully there you're not you're like what and then once you get to another spot all of those people all of it connects all of it makes sense all of it exactly, just exactly. combines yeah i love that uh, but yeah it's like the 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 that's when this song is when kind of like a lot of the concepts really start to take hold okay. um for example you have the the one of one of my favorite lyrics in the in the, in the song being I'll, I'll cradle your i'll cradle your thoughts through this trying time um because what the story is now telling you or what the story that that are trying to convey is there's these two these two opposing forces and you have mm. you know adam's character and my character which realistically speaking are the same character they're the same thing they're just different parts of the psyche okay um so adam is really adam is uh really playing the 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 darker part of the psyche but not yet and you don't right. understand that yet that's why when you start the song with i'll cradle your thoughts through this trying time it's like i'll protect you I will protect you. Not really. <laughs> you know, it's like, huh. I, I'm, I'm going to let you. It's a false sense of security. That's really what it yeah, is. Yeah. And it could be like, you could interpret that as intrusive thought too. If you're talking about like anxiety and just like human, human mentality, like intrusive thoughts. Like, yeah, I'm here to protect you, but realize that, you know, we're going to fucking die someday. You know, that type of shit. Yeah, it's, exactly. It, you know? it's it's the the deeper into this the uh, the deeper into the album you get you start realizing how much of it is really really based in a lot of very concrete and very grounded concepts and ideas i just used all these you know grandiose ways to explain it you know yes um you know like the as the crown as the crown bears judgment upon your lives you know like that stuff like that that's talking about very simple concepts of you're going to you uh, you're the crown because the crown is the trinity yes. like again all that stuff is connected different ways to to mask these different things um which at the end of the day they all turn out to be the same thing um but um you know it's you tell yourself these things all the time like you know it's like yeah you know I, i'm i'm fine i'm good yeah. what are you talking about you know i'm good but you know you're lying. You know you're not. You know you're not okay. You know you need help. You you know you want to. You know you need to say to someone like, "Hey, I need help." But not everyone can do that. You know. Yes. Um. That's why you have that. You know. It, you know lyrics like that throughout the record of like talking about the psyche, talking about um, I'll I'll like different ways of I'm here for you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Again, we, we we keep coming back to that that a very simple way of explaining it of your 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 own worst critic, right? For yes. example, just using that. Mm -hmm. Even something as simple as that, like I'll write a, a riff and I'm like, this riff is fucking sick. And I'll yeah. go get a drink of water. <laughs> I'll come back. I'm like, this riff is garbage. You know? And then it, it's just like, what happened? You know? Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's, it's that concept of like, you, you're there for yourself until you're not, you know what I mean? And a lot yeah. of people, unfortunately are not there for themselves. Uh, and then you may go through a time where you're not, but then eventually you are, you know, like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like the the chorus, for example, like uh, um, as I walk this field into the fear, oh the abyss becomes real. Um, at my feet lay despair, breathing clouded air. Uh, what's the what's the end of it? Soon the rot becomes all I feel. 
And that's another thing talking about you know, using the rot. That was the other concept that I forgot or, or motif, I should say like the right. rot is the, is the kind of uh, the lyrical explanation of, of the end. Yes. It's like your mind is gone. You know, I love the way that you sung that too. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that was, that was a chorus that I was very unhappy with, for example, as we were talking about <laughs> um, until I sent it to Adam and Adam was like, this is quite possibly the greatest chorus you've ever written. Mm -hmm. like, oh, my heart. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of that, right? It's a lot of kind of just like this song is really helping from a, from a grandiose like lore perspective it's helping tell the story of all of these characters and all these concepts while very plainly telling you that none of it's real you know when mm -hmm. we get to the breakdown the big breakdown which has the the title track line in it it's it says we are eternity like adam fucking yeah delivers the fuck out of that line and i'm gonna be i'm gonna be honest with you i'm for myself adam he can speak to that speak to speak to speak to this concept that that lyric for some reason it didn't hit me until after the album came out mm. and then when the album came out and it was time to no i'm sorry not not before the album uh, before the album came out we were working on the music video we were working on the music video and we got to that lyric and then seeing it and now instead of hearing it now seeing that lyric and seeing adam's delivery of it and his physical delivery of that lyric yes um it was i was like fuck okay now that now that lyric is way more important yes. um, because I as I was going through and coming up with the track list and I, I landed on We Are Eternity. The song yeah. was originally called Eternity, but I, we say We Are Eternity in the song. I feel that this album is a very good representation of who we are mm -hmm. um, and the uh, the lyrical concepts for, for myself. And, and I'll let Adam speak to this. I feel that that's who I am. You know, what I mean, like the, the lyrical content of the album. Um, so when we got to that lyric of We Are Eternity, it was like very clearly stating in the song from a lore perspective, hey, we, me and you, are eternity. Right. Yeah, and, okay. Because it's it's again, those are those concepts of those are the there are two people in the in the in the in the in the story, which realistically is one person. Mm -hmm. So it's like that's flat out saying it. We are eternity. Right. It's like, ah, you know, it does yeah, I, lo I love it. Sense, yeah. yeah. And Adam, for if you, you will, Yeah, there you go. Oh, um, I, uh, this is like, We Are Eternity was like one of my favorite songs, um, even from like the, the concepts of it, because the, the breakdowns in it are just so awesome. Yeah. And, um, I really liked that, uh, there's that big chunk in the, the second breakdown in that song where you just get to show like um just sort of my vocal prowess and also just with like really good delivery yeah uh, that breakdown is probably like one of the the most like intricate but like passionate and angry breakdowns that, yes. that i had the pleasure of recording like the uh, between like the main lines of it are are low gutturals but mm -hmm. like background you have like these nagging, really like fierce mids backing yes. up what the original lyrics are with um, like no gods, no masters. Yeah. It's almost like uh, someone's making a speech and he has like a whole army behind him that knows what yeah. to say. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, yeah. Yeah. It's like really, the, uh... really I'm, I'm scrolling to the part because I'm trying to remember the lyric before it. Um, the handing out sentences from a seat at the high table, acting as counsel at the behest of God, and then the <laughs> no that kicks in directly yeah. after it. Yeah. It's like, oh man, it just, mm -hmm. fe you just it just feels like because the other part about that, which is which is the, the which I feel is what makes that breakdown so heavy, is the silence. There isn't a lot of there un, until the second half of the breakdown. There's not a lot of instruments in the beginning of that breakdown. It, it gives you those that that triplet hit and then the all the stuff kicks, drops out and is just adam right like it's adam and i think like a, like a string noise in the background yeah oh it's so great and i think too like as we're as we're getting more familiar with this record lyrically and you guys are telling the story of it um this album 
with the two halves of the psyche, the two halves of one person, reminds me hella of Whitechapel's Kin. Because that mm-hmm. record, like literally that the reason the album cover looks how it is is because it's it's uh, Phil Bozeman battling with his uh, intrusive negative self. And through all that he has been, which is depicted on the Valley and Kin, he's like, I mean, we could easily kill ourselves and just be with our parents, but we have a life to live. We have a legacy to forge. And like that, that's one of the reasons I love that album so much is like, it's him, the most personal that you can get battling with yourself and getting through this, uh, this rough patch in your life. So Mm -hmm. I thought I should let you guys know that in that form, Eternity and Whitechapel's Kin actually connects a lot, um, but they're they're drastically different musical elements to um, to uh, Eternity. But yeah, absolutely, like such a great journey that we're going on so far with the lyrics. And then the the last thing I wanted to touch on, uh, or at least the the what I think would be the last thing I I, I personally want to touch on with um, We Are Eternity is is like the more black metal section in the middle of the song before the yes. breakdown we're talking about, mm-hmm. um, where me and Adam kind of uh adam and i we were you know we're you know obviously there's there's a this this dude is a wealth of of lyrical i'm not not lyrical um uh, i'm sorry um i guess you could say vocal ability yes so when we're in we're in here i have headphones on he stands either standing right next to me sitting right next to me in a, behind a bunch of blankets whatever he's in the room and uh, at, we can only hear each other you know, uh, so in that situation, it was a conversation that me and him had, and it birthed one of my favorite things that we've ever recorded, um, which was what we dubbed the witch, witch, witchy highs. Okay. Um, which was, all right, everyone's doing the tunnel, t- tunnel highs. That's the way we're all doing. Okay, whatever. Yeah, cool. We could do all the low stuff. Adam could do the lowest shit on the planet. Dope. That's great. You know, yeah. you know, it's it's you know, it was what can we do that will give a voice to a part, right? Like, what can we do to give a voice to a lyrical part? And the the lyric of of um, uh, I try to remember it. For I am the personification of torment and time. Yes, like that. Like I was like, we need yeah. you. Because, like, doing that as a regular high, yeah, it sounded cool. Of course it did. We did it as a low underneath. Yeah, it sounded dope. But it was, like, it's missing character. Yes. It's missing something. You know, it was like, because we did the whole part, the because um, the part for I am the personification of torment and time, roaming the lands, tending the rotten, and then there's a background that, that screams forgotten, um, a yeah. doom foretold of which you don't know, uh, um, Kept in the searing dark of black with black silk silk veiled eyes set forth by the abyssal tribunal. It's like all of that stuff sounds cool if you do it as a high. Of course it does. Yes. But it was like we need to do something different. We gotta do something else. So we just like Adam can explain it more than I can, of course, from from what he's doing. All I can say is the the particular tone, and that's something that comes up throughout the album every now and then. We didn't want to overuse it, but we, we use it to to what I feel was enough on the album. Uh, of course, it, we could have used it more because I personally love it. But mm-hmm. to, to for it to not become, and this is something that that you'll see as a, a, a trend with us, just the different ideas and concepts that we go with. We don't want to beat something into the ground. You know, we don't yes. want to fucking do every single vocal style all the goddamn time, all fucking always, always and forever. It's like mm-hmm. let's let's instead of doing a regular high or tunnel high or whatever. Let's find something else. It doesn't have to be groundbreaking. It doesn't have to be something. We're not reinventing the wheel. Yeah. We just want, or I should say, I want our music and our vocals to be one piece. Mm -hmm. So when you listen to the band, you listen to a part, it's, yeah, obviously that's Adam Mercer, but you're like, wait a minute, is this a way you're probably, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's what I've always looked to do. That's why I'm like, anytime you, when you listen to our music, there's no, like Adam, we all know Adam's a fucking beast. We get it. Yes, we know that. <laughs> we Thanks. we are doing. <laughs> we we are we are doing something that a lot of people are already doing. You know, again, we're yes. not trying to reinvent the wheel, but no. I don't. I want us to be a a one unit. A mm. one, I, I've always looked at it as we are a way of Providence. It's just yes. this is what it is. This is this is the piece. Here is the music. 
and there's everything. And it's not the music with the vocals sitting up here. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not here's the music with a bunch of different vocal. Like it could no. this could be twelve different vocalists, and you'd have no idea. Yes. Goes, no. It's yeah. We'll do that. We'll do it when we feel it's necessary to do it. But at the end of the day, the vocals are slotted right into the song. You know what I mean? Yes. They're one picture. Um, so it's like, how can we mix, you know, a vocal style mixed with all these kind of like grandiose ideas or these really fucking descriptive and, 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 and dare I say, evil sounding lyrics, you know what I mean? Like with, with that part, like for, the, for I am the personification of torment and time. Like, I, like that is, that's your, that's you saying like, or well, not you, but that's, that's me. That's us explaining this part of your brain has been there forever. Yes. And it is the, it is your literal creation of your torment and the time that you've spent with it. I, I'm, yes. I'm trying this. I'm almost spoon feeding it to you and then I'm throwing it out. You know? Right. Exactly. And it works. And I like, think it works really well. And then the, and then using, using something that, that Adam was like, yo, let's fucking try this sound and well, let's go for it. Here's something I'm working on. Here's something I've been workshopping. I'm like, hell yeah, let's try it. We do it and we keep refining it and keep refining it. Cause I think we re recorded, we recorded that out. We recorded that originally a while back. We sat on the pre vocal for a long time. And then when he came back to my house to re-record some stuff or finish the, finish the album, it yes. was like, there were certain things we needed to hit again and some things that we couldn't. Mm -hmm. Like there's some takes on the album that, that were from the original pre-pro version because we just, we just, we caught the magic of that vocal take. Uh, and it was like, that's just what it is now, you know? Yes. Um, but this is one of those ones that uh, Adam, I'm sure, you know, he, he, he knows better yeah. than I do. The, the witchy high was like, um, the, there's just like the classic, like, um, I feel like most people would say a good deathcore high, like, you might like them raspy and not as high, or you yes. like just really, you know, a Straight. a reasonable level of of high. Maybe not screeching, but yeah. like like Rings of Saturn, right? Or or original Chelsea Grin. Yeah, no, but, but, yeah, just like the really pointy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to take what I already could do and. Instead of pointing it up, just point it out. Yeah, so I'm direct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, um, yeah, and that's that was like the birth of that. But it really was like just from, yeah, pointing it outward and just trying to do something different. Yeah, you got to man. You got to add to the pot. Otherwise, people are, aren't aren't gonna look your way. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, fucking sure as hell. Just like the De again, DeAndre doing the the cleans for TBS and most of this record, really. That's what stands out to me when it comes to Awaken Providence. Is like this is the first band in Black and Deathcore to make cleans work, and I love that. Um, yeah. But I'll, obviously, also, also the witchy highs and shit, which we're talking about, um, absolutely iconic. And um, plenty of vocalists right now that I'm comparing to your spectrum um, of, of vocals, um, Adam. Oh. And I, I'm just like, yeah, that this dude sounds a lot like Adam, but I like that. You know, I'm familiar with that spectrum. That's what that's what I'm calling a lot of them because it's like so many people do so many different techniques, and yeah. they happen to tweak them a little bit. And it's like, oh, so this this like yeah, like that yeah. could easily be a Dan Watson or that could be a yeah. Phil Bozeman, you know, all yeah. that type of shit. It, it just sure. like. It all gets so specific now because it's 2022 mm -hmm. and there are hundreds of us. <laughs> yeah, but yes. yeah, man. Um, but yeah, it, it. Um, I think uh, you you uh, mentioning the, the cleans on the record is a good transition into the cleanest song on the record. There we go. <laughs> we are we are bound by terror. This is, I think, I think as a collective, this may be our favorite song on the record. Um, 
it definitely is the I would say for <laughs> yeah it, 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 I want to say it's for obvious reason it's the song that that's probably the most emotional one um but the um this was the this was the track that like I don't know if you if you follow Jesse on social media <laughs> excuse me on social media but uh he he pointed out stuff about this about this song and kind of where he was when he recorded the track um which man i i we ha we haven't talked about jesse and in, in jordan enough but uh jesse I, I gotta shout that kid out hard body because he he was able to take the insanity that comes out of my head and play it um nice. because it was when i when i was writing these drums and i was writing this record he was not in mind yet and then and then it was like oh now he is <laughs> it's like all right cool Sick. hopefully you can do this dude because this shit's gonna be fucked up um and when we were recording the album we started off recording it with um i want to say we did horror first because it was easy um but then we immediately went to court of the trinity which is the worst song on the album in in the sense of play playability oh right um it is a it's just that is a technical death metal it's a tech death, just seven minute beast. Right. And um, I'll never forget. I, I very rarely feel bad um, for like musical stuff. I felt horrible. <laughs> felt horrible <laughs> while, while Jesse was recording that song, dude. It was, I'm like, I'm sitting there like, dude, why did I do this? <laughs> like, it, it, you know, it's like, <laughs> Well, whatever. We'll, we'll we'll get that later. But we'll get to is, that. He he finished. He recorded that song, and then we recorded this. And it was he 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 says this is his favorite song to play on drums. It's his most the most fun song to play on drums. But it's also still an extremely complicated song. Um, and this was this was the one that kind of like he got that that reinvigoration of yeah this this, this is gonna be good after we yeah put him, I put him through the gauntlet for almost <laughs> like four days of one song. Um, and then he was like, and I immediately regret my decision because this is also still hard. <laughs> um, but even still, even through that, that kid fucking ripped and got through that, got through this song. And this was this was the one I was very interested to see live because, yeah, you know, I sit here, I write these songs, I hear the same parts over and over and over again, whatever. Um, but seeing, actually seeing someone play the song, um, it, it changes the perspective, you know, it changes the way, the way that a lot of this stuff feels. Uh, and then that that kind of goes into the music video, and, and um, we we each have, um, and, and in this case, I'll say uh, me and Adam because I, I obviously I can't speak for Jesse and Jordan, but Adam and I both have, uh, you know, like had different experiences with the song when we were filming the video um, that we just put out. Um, when this song, when we when you know we got to my parts in the video, um, I, you know, the whole time I'm running around, I'm uh, I'm saying okay this is what you're going to be doing or I'm working with, uh, uh, the guy, the, the dude who did the video, Toddy, um, shout out to Toddy for our last three videos, right? Three or four, three videos. Three. Yeah. I think three. Right. Yeah. Eternity. Or three, right? God, yeah. Including God killer. That could be four. I don't know if he did God killer. Though. Nah, he, he didn't do God killer. Oh, okay. Um, so then it would be three. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, so shout out to Toddy for those, of course. Um, but I'm like running around. I'm like, looking at the shot list i'm telling him what's well we're, what the next thing is we're doing i'm running, doing this that a third and then finally it's like okay we got everybody else now it's time to do your shots i'm like all right cool whatever i'm been fine this whole time um i go to start you know doing my parts or whatever like that and then when certain parts of the song kicked in dude i i like that welling up feeling happened yeah and it was like it was like holy shit this is this is like like this is the closest because before this, because keep in mind, we haven't played any of these songs live yet. Yes. Um, we've actually, we actually haven't played any of these songs together yet. Mm. Um, we've just been doing, we've been doing the pieces separately. Bouncing so we, back and we, forth. Yeah. And we recorded it. We recorded the guitars. Jordan was here. I recorded my guitars. He recorded his guitars. I re-recorded my guitars. He re-recorded some of his guitars. I re-recorded some, like it was a lot of that stuff, but that was the closest we came to playing it together. And mm. then when Jesse was tracking the drums, I'm sitting there, I don't have a guitar, but he's tracking the drums, you know? Adam yeah. was sitting next to me tracking vocals and you know, like we're we're doing these in all different places and different pieces and we were never together while tracking the album um other than different people being with me to do stuff um but this song um it just I, I don't I can't explain it I can't really really give you 
give you too much about why something about this song man it just it every time every time it's like a punch in the chest mm. and it's it's not even not even like like a painful punch in the chest it's one of those just punch it's just it hits i, I won't even say you it hits me um just from for just as soon as that like intro just dark gritty guitar part yeah. comes in it's something about that that expansive reverb yes. on this one guitar part before the vocals kick in that just it just creates that 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 like distance you know what i mean it creates that yeah. cold distance um and then this is now speaking about it from a lyrical perspective this is the first time in the i think if memory serves correctly the first time in the album where you start to see from a lyrical perspective that Adam's character is in fact not there to help you. Right. Okay. Um, because the the first lyric, the first the line in the song is here I lay bound, bound to the hunt stalking my oblivious prey. Um, okay. And then it's bound by the river I think it is. Oh, claimed by the river. Claimed by the river. Um, okay. So again, you know those 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 constant connections and stuff. Yes. Um but the interesting thing about this song is that we each and Adam and I both um have separate reasons why this song really does hit us mm -hmm. um and they they and the lyrics mean different things to both of us and, and i i find that to be you know quite interesting because it's something that um you know no matter who you are even the people in the band we have different reasons for yes. having connections to these songs you know um and this one just even even just from a from a from a lyrical perspective again this is when you start kind of starting to see that you know because when when uh everything like kicks back in again after when the song really gets going mm -hmm. um, with the blast beat section, the the lyric is "Fear my mind," which yes, you know, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that section to Adam because uh, I know that that's that's very personal to him. Yeah, um, yeah, it, um, it's this song. This song has a lot, dude. It does a lot. It does a lot. It does a lot. Yeah, like, yeah dude. Like DeAndre said, uh, it's a very like emotional song, and I will preface this with I do have to get just from work at like 10 30 mm. so i probably will have to to hop off yeah um, that's fine after after this um but um yeah uh it's very emotional uh i had a really hard time practicing it um and i think maybe recording it um but uh just really builds that that ball up in my throat and uh the lyrics that really like the beginning of the song, the here I lay bound in the hunt and wake I stalk my oblivious prey. Like it, just the feeling and the tone of it is already like melancholy and unsettling. Uh, but once you start to get further into the lyrics, like, and I didn't even uh, realize it until like after we did the pre-pro for it and listening um, to like me actually doing it. But uh, I have a sister who has, like, struggled with cancer for a while. Mm. And specifically brain cancer. Um, so just diving into, like, yes, there is a psychological aspect to it. But uh, one that you wouldn't expect because it's super specific, like, to me is... Yes. Uh, Fear my mind, once a lush land of gold has become right and barren, tainted by unclean souls. Mm. And it just rem like reminds me a lot of my sister because she's still lucid and she's still there and like very much so her still. Yes. But it's a very um, uh, like a blurry version of her. Yeah. Um, and it was just sort of a like a unintentional metaphor for that um mm -hmm. like she used to you know be so outgoing and and you know upbeat and uh seeing her go from that to over the years um how she is now uh i don't want to say it's sad but at the same time it is like i don't want to say it's sad because it's my sister but at the same time, it is. And mm -hmm. that's the hard truth of it. And that's just sort of some of the things we tackle in this. Like, yeah, I, I don't want to backtrack, but in We Are Eternity, like, maintain the mental seclusion. Uh, seclusion. Uh, 
that like that mentality um is just uh, you know an, another piece into this just yeah sort of cloaking uh like the mythology and the beautiful lyrics like cloak uh what's underneath them but uh yeah that that meeting was like uh really specific to me but it uh just really got me yeah and, um uh yeah and deandre singing is just perfect in it it's mm -hmm. it's totally not forced it's almost as if like it feels like someone came up behind you and you didn't even realize if they were patting you on the back but you didn't yeah. realize until they were like doing that almost yeah. like reassuring but yeah yeah mm -hmm. angel so, uh, on your shoulder type of thing yeah yeah not not anything like it's just almost like oh i didn't even know i needed to hear that in this song mm -hmm. um but yeah 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 uh, it, it's it, you know it, it, it there's also um i reference um one of my one of my favorite poems by uh wb yeats in this uh in this um uh, in this song as well um because it's the uh it's like the i guess this is the technically the second verse or the verse i guess it's hard to say but it's it's um it's kind of how we start to pull back into the story a little bit um yeah. while still maintaining that that again that that you know that that sadness and that men, men, just like that i don't know that heavy weight and emotional feeling like uh yeah. the part um lay your heaven at my feet um things once blue and dim in the end will nourish me i'll tread softly upon your dreams soon they will be ripe for the rotting once gold and silver and embroidered cloth have been lost in the culling. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, you know, it's like uh, going through that, like it, it's, it's a lot of, it's, I, I, the, the, the poem by WB Yeats is not exactly that. Obviously it's similar. There, there are concepts pulled from, from that poem and like placed into this, uh, like the lay your heaven at my feet part, for example. Yeah. Like that's, that's one of those kind of like, it's a um, the 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 end of that poem being tread softly for you tread on my dreams. Yes. Um, it's I ha I I'm nothing but a I'm nothing but a poor man and I have I I I only have my dreams like I have nothing else all I have is this mm -hmm. so I'm I'm giving you all I have left. Yes. So please like please Help me. don't you know please don't fuck it up you know what I mean because that's yeah. the only thing I have left. But the thing is. Um, you're hearing it from the other side and that's the side that's not there to help you, you know, like, right. So, Cause it's, 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 I, I have the, from a lyrical perspective, the, that character is telling you, Hey, bring me all you have left and I will take care of it, but I'm going to take care of it in the way that I see fit to take care of it. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, again, talking about it from the perspective of the story, it's a very, it's a very dark story. So it becomes yes. a matter of it being, give me all you have left all that's left in your mind and i'm mm -hmm. going to take it and i'm going to destroy it because again it's it's that other side that you don't want to listen to you know yeah. it's that side it's that side of you that's saying you're not good enough it's that side of you that says everything you're you're go everything you do is worthless right. you're worthless it's that part of it right because at the end of the day you strip away everything you have all of your uh, the computer i'm talking to you guys on my phone that's sitting right next to me my my screens my guitars whatever whatever you strip all that away the only thing you have left is your thoughts is you and, yes. and who you are but if you give that away if you get rid of that or if, or if that's the thing that you are or you know obviously not you literally but that's the thing that's being attacked or that's the thing that you're mm -hmm. saying or you you hear in your head that's not worth anything where yes. that's the most valuable thing you have mm -hmm. um in this context it says um like i said the um, i'll tread soft i'll tread softly upon your dreams soon they will be ripe for the rotting yes and remember the, the whole the whole point is coming to that end and the the end of the, the end of the story is that everything is over you know mm -hmm. um and no know, knowing that it it's it makes it that much more complicated for, yes. for us right you know like the like we 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 want to put out a good product you know what i mean of course we want to want to have fun and make music but it's like when when you sit and you kind of pay attention to what it is you we're i because I, I can tell you dude while we were recording this and while while writing these parts and all that kind of stuff we were like oh that's sick that's gonna sound super cool or or i would 
send a paragraph to Adam, like, hey, here's a part I wrote, you know, like just different stuff like that. And we're yes. excited about it. And it's not until it's done and we listen to it and we hear the delivery of the, of what it is. And when it's tangible is yes. when the stuff starts to make that much more sense. Mm-hmm. And that's why when you have a part like that or or really anything else throughout the song, which I'll I'll, I'll, I'll jump to the pretty much the climax of the song in a second, but um you have a lot of those concepts of that we were talking that we talk about throughout the album being very very final and very very yes. uh, very upsetting you know and again right. that concept of you got nothing else but yourself right you know? exactly so when, you, when you when you start to break that down and you become your worst enemy then yeah. you you don't you don't have fucked. anything else let you the only the, the all of that is lost to the culling of your of you attacking yourself mm-hmm. you know? yeah and, um yeah like yes yeah, sorry uh, love this song um for one for two when when I, I i remember noticing the the primary title i'm like what does that mean and then i i'm like oh duh there's parentheses and it's like we are bound by terror i'm like bingo anxiety and like intrusive <laughs> thought the negative side of yourself and mm-hmm. with with the uh the insight with the um explanation that we're getting this definitely reminds me of like me always like people a handful of people have always thought of me and is like uh naively optimistic right very hopeful um i like to have a positive outlook on things and every now and then it's like but what if i like stop being the nice guy what if i stopped being so optimistic what if i stopped sometimes letting people walk all over me um and i kind of decided to submit and kind of surrender all of my more positive aspects and all of my optimism, uh, my spirit per se. Um, and like, how would that end up? How would that uh, result for me in the future? And that's kind of like what this song reminds me of is that process of like, damn, like adults always have seemed so bitter to me. Or like when I say adults, I mean like my parents' generation and shit. Um, like they, they, it seems like they gave up their hopes and dreams a long time ago and like almost became black and white instead of being so colorful. And that's also what the song reminds me of, but that's like, that, that would be my commentary on it. And then, and then, you know, that's a, that's an immediate and obvious representation of why the song is in black and white or why the video is in black and white. Mm. You know, it's like we, we, um, when I, when I was putting together the treatment for the video and I was coming up with all the shots and all the, all the stuff and, um, all the concept photos and all the, uh, all the, like the vision board, I guess you can call it. It, it was all in black and white. Um, but I didn't, I didn't want to commit to it yet. Um, so when we were actually doing the video and we got the first cut, it was in color. Mm. I, I did tell Toddy, I was like, Hey dude, just desaturate it though. Like desaturate it. Cause I, I don't know if I want to commit to the black and white yet. Let's just do it mm. desaturated and go from there. We'll keep some color in it. And then he sent me the cut. And before we, before we sent him any notes at all, the first thing I said was send me a, send me a black and white cut as well. Okay. Let's just, let's just see. I told the dudes, I was like, let's just see it. You know, that's what I, that's what my vision was initially. It was, this has to be in black and white mm-hmm. um, because I want it to be as, you know, it's, it's, this song is very clear to me, at least it's very clear. Yeah. Um, and it is black and white. It's very obvious, mm-hmm. um, which is part of the reason why, ironically, I did obscure the title a little bit by putting the title in Italian mm-hmm. um, because it was, I know everyone doesn't speak Italian. I know that. I yeah. don't speak Italian. You know, mm. so it was like, but I wanted to obscure that title just a little bit, just a little bit, um, because everything else is so clear and obvious. Yes. Um, so it was, that's what that was. But when he sent that cut in black and white and I sent it to the guys and Adam's immediate re- reaction was, yes, this is what mm. it was supposed to be. Right. Yeah. And I was like, the, the, and seeing it in black and white and then like, obviously the world will never see it in color, but <laughs> seeing it in color, it was like, yeah, this is a cool video. And then seeing it in black and white, it was like, holy shit, this whole song, like it became one piece. Yeah. And it did, it did that thing I was talking about earlier of becoming one picture. Right. Um, you know, and like working off of these ideas and all these, and all this stuff. Cause like one, one of the, the, fr- and I can see it right now looking at the treatment. The first image in the treatment is that falling, like that falling mm. into that emptiness. I was like, yes. I, I was like, I told Tati, I was like, we need to figure out how to get that to work because I need mm-hmm. to be falling. That's I don't know how we're gonna do it. We gotta figure it out. Um, and we we managed to do it, and, and it looked great, you know. And it was it was a lot of that kind of just like that 
falling into that darkness that's just mm-hmm. never ending you know and that's why there's a lot of that empty space and there's yeah we are we're in that area for the, the like that nice area for the uh for the performance shots but yes for the for the the more intimate and close-up shots we're in that deep expanse of black yeah i love it you know it's a great touch and it, it's they're all metaphors and all all different stuff to to you know the whole thing and mm-hmm. then just to to round out this song really quickly, I know we we've, we've got to jump to other stuff. Um, the middle section where we come out of that breakdown and we just go into um, the clean singing part, um, mm-hmm. which is the intrinsically um, such claims should bear terror, but fear escapes me. Um, you know, like coming out of. Uh, I should actually go back just a little bit. Sorry. Um, the breakdown is two vocal parts happening at the same time, which is yeah. um, drowned in your mind. That's the main line. It's mm. just really extended for, for a long time. Um, but it's the vocals around it that's, uh, that completes the idea, which is under the weight of seclusion in your mind. Cause it, again, it, they come together at the same time. Yes. So when he says drowned, um, it's drowned and then under the weight of seclusion. Mm. So it's like, I, we're completing two different lyrical, lyrical ideas on top of each other. Yes. Um, so it's, finishing that and kind of like continuing to tell that that part of the story of your your the thing that that again I, I was saying earlier in the song that your most valuable possession is the thing that that you are allowing mm-hmm. um or maybe not allowing i don't i don't want to i don't want to i don't want any of the things that i'm saying to be taken as me um undermining what people go through when i say that kind of stuff but right um you know it's like i'll say it for myself then in that case like me undermining what undermining my own mind you know undermining yes. myself and saying that i am i am not good enough or i'm not this or i'm not that mm-hmm. um so it's like drowned in the weight, drowned under the weight of your uh, under the weight of seclusion that emptiness i put myself there i'm in my own box yes you know and that box is is bad for me because i'm saying that i am the worst person in this box mm-hmm. you know or whatever it is that i'm doing is the worst thing i've done that's in this box yeah. you know the song i wrote is the worst song i wrote or the that thing i said to my girlfriend in 1997 is the worst thing that i ever said to somebody you know what i mean like <laughs> whatever whatever thoughts you have whatever is there is, is the stuff that gets locked there but um mm-hmm. as you as you go through that part um when you get to the 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 screaming wraith spells out doom and then following directly after that is my part which is the intrinsically such claims should bear terror mm-hmm. um which is like inherently inside you know that all of what we're saying should be bad yes all of it should be bad um but we get to that the second part of that being um but fear escapes me um a sudden calm engulfs me in tapestries sewn by the Aranes, which is yes. just the, it's just um that's a, a reference a greek mythology reference mm. um to the Aranes. um um but it you know it's that that piece of there is something there. We can't really tell what it is just yet. There is something there. That's why in the in um in the video you have the the witch. She has right. that cloth that she's like messing with and like sewing. Um and that whole we're bound by terror. And then Adam says directly after my part where me or directly after the part where me and him are going back and forth vocally. Um Adam says we're uh, we are tethered in the end. Again, mm-hmm. this is this is the time where we're telling you, bro. This mm-hmm. is the same this is that's this is all in here. Yeah, it's all there. It's all who you are. You know, it's like it's they are the same. You know, um, but uh, song by the ironies, and then you have the what do you what like what do you want to see? And it's like just show me the truth in the end, but mm-hmm. that will expose me. You know, like it's like if I tell you what the truth is, is I'm I'm also telling you who I am, and who I am is you. But yeah. then you get to the end of that part. It's like um, your lies keep growing thin. Because like the more and more you tell, the more and more things you say to me, and and that li- literally is a reference to the album. But the longer you listen to the album, the more and more you'll start to see these things are not true, or these things are this are you know they're just they're lies, for lack of a better term. Yes. Um. Uh. To show me the truth in the end, but that will expose me, and then your lies keep growing thin. And then he says, "Worry not, you won't need them, for we are te- tethered in the end. You're not going to need the lies because you'll find that you'll you'll realize it, and I'm going to tell you flat out, we're the same." Mm-hmm. you know um and that that's where a lot of the like the kind of story perspective comes in and and, yes. and there's there's um a very common thread here which you know i i tried my best to jump between um the story that you know that's constructed and then i also wanted to continue to tell my own story you know what yes. I mean? or 
or or the pieces of a story that can be interpreted by different people to the point mm-hmm. where the vocalist that's screaming it has his own interpretation of what it means you know mm-hmm. because it's it's meant to be something deeply connected and i feel and this is something that me and adam have both said seriously as well as jokingly that me and him are connected and, it, and it's mm-hmm. just to the point where and the joking part of it not to bring the moves to somewhere else but the joking part of it is me and him tend to facetime each other and we'll both be sitting on the toilet <laughs> like, yeah. you know it's like yeah that I, happens. I, I, I it happens frequently right it's like I, i'll just call him real quick as we facetime a lot I, I, i'm i'm super big on facetiming people who, I'm, who i who i love people who mm-hmm. are close to me who i can't see frequently i won't call you on the phone i won't i, I don't like texting i, I i'll yeah. facetime you i want to see you i want to see you when i talk to you mm-hmm. um so I, I FaceTime Adam and, and like, for example, we, like I said, we, I referred to, I was referring, referencing me and him talking to the other day. I called him by accident and immediately hung up and then I FaceTimed him, you know? Yeah. Uh, he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're on the point. We're right, not talking, right. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but no, no, and no. I feel that again, yeah, I, I, I'm going to say this real quick. I know Adam's going to jump. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Adam. Adam, say what you're gonna say, and then I'll then I'll continue. Oh no, I, I was gonna say I, I actually got to get going. Yeah. Um. But hey, Sean. Yes, sir. It was awesome talking with you, bro. I know it's been like a long time coming. Mm-hmm. Um. But I'm super glad that we got to do this and that uh, we you know got to have some face to face time. It, it's been awesome and just talking about um the concepts and everything with you and uh giving you some insight has been has been great man dude it's mutual i've I've loved this opportunity man you be sure to stay safe out there tonight i will bro i will y'all have a good part yeah you too man later later i'll check you dude peace peace um so and to finish that just to finish that uh point really quickly um you know, again, like I say, I say it funny. I say it in a funny way, but um, me and Adam have have been connected in a lot of different ways, mm-hmm. um, and we, you know, we've had a lot of similar experiences or different things like that. So I feel like, you know, I'll write a section or I'll write something and it'll speak to him. You know what I mean? Yes. Or, or you know, whatever the case is. When I was just writing it because that's just how I felt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this song specifically, excuse me. You're good. <laughs> this, this song just has just like so much, uh, so much of that. You know, so much mm-hmm. of this like just emotional connection and emotional weight and stuff like that. And it was like, how can we, how can we, my, my, my goal every time is always, how can I, how can I convey that stuff to you in a, in a way that's, you know, it's still metal. It's still heavy. It's still, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever evil, dark, however you want to interpret it. But yeah, there's a message there, you know, there's a deeper message there that's more important than how heavy the breakdown is or the weird, crazy noises that Adam's making Mm -hmm. or the the way that I'm singing. You know what I mean? I, I, I just watched a, um, Watching me, watching reactions is one of my favorite things, man. Like I, I, every single time you put out a reaction, I watch it. Every single time, I appreciate anyone, that. No matter, no matter how big or small the YouTube channel is, I watch mm-hmm. every single one of those reactions because I, I truly want to know what people think of the stuff that 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 it is. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, and I mean this in the best way possible. I'm not writing the songs for anybody else other than myself. You know, mm-hmm. but it's always interesting. I always love to know what people think about it, and, um. There was a reaction that that, that I'll reference. I, I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say any names, but um, it was for it was for Siamo or, or for Terror. And mm. man, did that dude hate the vocals? He hated the clean. <laughs> and it was and it was it was it was interesting to watch because I know the song obviously, and a lot of a lot of times, uh, I would say nine out of ten times, these reactions are first time hearing a song, um, and. This one was this guy's first time hearing the song because he didn't listen to the album. He checked out the singles and stuff. And I know the clean singing is coming. He doesn't know that. So as he's listening to it and we get to the first clean singing section, which is behind Adam's part, Mm -hmm. he was like, he was super into it. And then that part came in and he went, uh. and then (laughs) they continued listening and he was still into it, still into it. And then when my part, my sing, my part kicks in for the first time where I'm singing by myself, Mm -hmm. uh, he literally went, oh, God, no. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm watching this. And I'm like, and I'm like, oh, this guy, and my girlfriend, I'll never get my girlfriend sit. She was sitting right here on the floor mm-hmm. and she, she doesn't like to watch it, but she wants to be there. Cause she's, she's one of those like secondhand embarrassment people. So she gets, yeah. she gets, 
she's more embarrassed or uncomfortable. She gets I, not embarrassed. She gets uncomfortable watching those as if she's the person that made it. Yeah. So yeah. it's like I know what's happening. I made the song. I know how it is. And she mm-hmm. says it when she's watching them. She's like, "How do you do this?" I was like, "I just <laughs> I love to know. I just love to yeah." Know. But. Uh, we get to the part, and I said it like after that. I was like, "Wait till he gets to the middle, dude," because I start, I start singing more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we got to the middle, and he did not like it. He was not happy, mm. not happy. Gets to the end of the song, and he was super unhappy about it. Yeah. But you know what I mean? At the end of the day, I get it. I have always known that this was. I said it to my girlfriend later one times. Like I, I knew this was a risk. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But at the end of the day, it was the difference with this album versus the last one. And I'm not necessarily, I'm not going to count God Killer in there because God Killer has his own thing. But that was after, that was, it's exactly his own thing. And it was all, it was also written after Eternity, mm. uh, after all these decisions were made with Eternity. It was, I'm going to do this stuff because this is what the, this is what the songs are calling for. You know, this is yeah. something that a conversation that me and my old drummer had a bunch of years ago. Shout out to my boy Brandon. Um, it was, something that me and him were talking about. We were like throwing out all these crazy ideas. Oh, we should do this in a song. We should do that in a song. And I remember we 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 stopped for a second. We thought about all the different crazy shit and crazy ideas we just came up with, and we were like, you know what? Let's just just do what the what the song calls for. Let's just mm-hmm. do what sounds right. You know what I mean? Let's let's not go because that's something. As soon as I sit down to write a song, and I say I'm going to write a song that does this, never fucking works. The mm-hmm. song ends up being crap. Um, like right now, I'm stuck. I'm the, the I'm stuck on track number six of our of the next record <laughs> and i can't yeah. get past this song because every time i go to try to write a new song or work on something i'm like all right i'm gonna write a song that kind of has this vibe and then right. it, it ends up sounding like garbage but um the clean singing and, and especially in this song because funny enough this song was actually supposed to be an album cut but the mm. but, um jesse jesse was like nah dude that song is great and this was it's way great. before the song had any lyrics or before the song was done it was the first, it was like up to the point where my clean singing part start, starts, um, and then the part directly after it, and that was all I was written. And mm-hmm. I, was, I was showing them. This was years ago. I was showing the guys, and I was like, "I don't know. I might scrap this one." And he was like, "Nah, dude, you got to finish that. Yeah, keep it." Man. And, I, and I and I and I thank him greatly for it because it, you know, it came out to be one of our favorite songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's that's terror. That's, right. Uh, we'll speed run the we'll speed run the Trinity because it's uh, the 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 trilogy. People are calling them trilogies. I called this one the Trinity because it's related to the album. Yeah, yeah. It just it that's more relevant to the album's lore. Per se. Exactly, exactly. Um, so I'll I'll speed run this one real quick. Um, the Hunt of the Ray, the Court of the Trinity. I'm sorry, the Hunt of the Ray, the Book of the Eldritch, and the Court of the Trinity are. Um, and and also by just their name, first movement, second movement, final movement. Yes. Um, those are just those are just references to to classical orchestral music because I'm a okay. I'm a huge huge fan of classical and orchestral music, um, which I'm pretty sure is obvious based on the the orchestral elements on the yeah. albums, uh, or on the album and and everything else. Which spoiler alert, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, it's only becoming more a part of our music. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, that that'll be my my quick little tidbit for the future of of our our music, the stuff I'm I'm working on currently. It, it's yeah, we're the I I almost want to create this like fake hype that mm. the uh, the album is an orchestral album that just has some metal parts to it. I'm gonna say that and let that be what it is. We just use that as a soundbite. Let's do it. It's like yeah, <laughs> this is. The next album is going to be an orchestral album with some metal influence. Let's do um, it. But in all honesty, uh, yeah, that the orchestral classical stuff's not going anywhere. It's only becoming becoming more and more because I'm studying it more, you know, oh, becoming yeah. more, 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 more into it and stuff. Um, but um, the Trinity, it was never, it was not meant to be that. It was not three songs that were meant to be together at all. Actually, they were. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's track five, six, and seven. Mm-hmm. Originally, it was track five. Track five was always the Hunt of the Wraith, which that was a bajillion. That was originally called the Hunt of Hounds. It was a bunch. Of, it had a bunch of different names, but uh, the Hunt of the Wraith. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
was the the way more logical because it's an immediate reference to error um back right. to the first lyric of the song of here i lay uh bound to the hunt um so it was like the hunt of the wraith so now it's like this is what it actually is this is the hunt of that character right um so it's telling that piece of the story again that one non-linear second. storytelling is my favorite thing sorry one second continue sir <laughs> you're good you're good um yeah the hunt of the wraith um that song was, uh, it's actually the slowest song on the album. It's at like 112 yes. BPM or something like that. Uh, but that allowed it to be like super rhythmic, uh, mm. which I, uh, you know, like a lot of us, I'm a fucking huge fan of Meshuggah. Um, so it was like, how can I make something just like, how can I homage Meshuggah somehow, you know? Okay. Uh, just something super groovy, something rhythm based that's not too ridiculous. But the whole intro is like that, you know, big, epic black metal, you know, mm whatever thing and stuff like the original version of it had a bunch of shitty chords in the beginning of it but i learned i learned music theory in the time of working on that album and i was like i need to fix this because it sounds bad Mm -hmm. um so i cleaned it up the the, the chords sound a lot better um lyrical content this song is is um super uh i think it's super obvious as far as like it being like the this is the the official transition into telling the truth of the album Um, oh yeah um and this happens in um because it, it happens technically because it's not te- other things album was supposed to be 10 tracks long um mm-hmm. but then i ended up deciding on nine because that would put that would put five dead in the middle mm-hmm. um so you have four um four on both sides and then yes. you have the fifth song dead in the, dead smack in the middle okay um but it's also the first part of the trinity it's also the you know it's a lot of stuff it, that that's yeah. plays a lot of a lot of points where terror is the bridge um terror is the lead up to the bridge and hunt is the bridge yes um, okay so it's like that's dead in the set dead smack in the middle of the album so the whole first half of the album is setting it up and the second half of the album is where where shit hits the fan yes um so you have um the lyrical section like the pre-chorus is really where that stuff starts to come come alive where the lyric is are you hurt did you lose your way mm-hmm. um now now take my hand and come with me um, don't be afraid. Everything will be okay. Don't worry. Deceit come na- comes natural to me. So it's, it's you know, yeah, you know, like, are you okay? You're fine, right? Here, I got you. Come with me. Come on. Mm-hmm. I got you. You'll be okay. I'm just letting you know I'm lying to you. But yeah, come on. <laughs> come on. You know, that's literally what I, 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 when I was writing the ideas and I was telling that, I was telling Adam, I was like, I'm going to, I want this to be really obvious. So mm-hmm. I'm going to, the last lyric is literally, Deceit comes natural to me. I'm lying to you. Like, mm. trying to tell you. Right. Um, and then the chorus, lead me to damnation. Uh, lead me to damnation. Back to where I know uh, all who suffer. Oh, great usurper. Um, your path imbued with soot and sulfur. Mm. Um, again, super obvious. With now I'm starting to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, thanks, man. Uh, the, the, the fact that you know that makes me so happy. <laughs> um yeah, it's like, it's, you know, I, I, this song is the one who where it's like, all right, holy shit, I've been lied to this whole fucking time. Okay, yeah. cool, I guess, I guess it's, uh, I'm in too deep at this point, you know what I mean? Like, that's mm-hmm. what the point of the album, that's a, that's where you are in the record. You're in too deep now, now you're fucking, now it's going down, you know? No way back. So it's like, that's why, exactly, so that's why I'm saying it, like, leave me to damnation, all right, mm-hmm. it be what it be, you know? And as we progress, and I'll, I'll talk, I'll, I'll, this will actually direct into the next song, um, more more of the lyrical content too like directly after the chorus the first chorus it's the um the lyric the river has claimed another like mm-hmm. you know it's like this you're not the first person to go through this you no. know I mean? you're not the first person to have these problems you're not the first person to, to you're not the only person to deal with this you're not the only person yeah. in the world who has these thoughts or these feelings so you you know it's there's a there it's, um oh hello oh, okay no problem Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, my my AirPods died. I think uh, you might need to turn the mic up a little bit, but I can I can hear you. (laughs) That's when you know the podcast has been pretty long now. (laughs) So the AirPods die. Okay. How about how about now? What are we looking at? Uh, just a little bit more. More. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
let's bump it to how about that? Yes, that's okay. fine. Cool, cool. Um yeah, it was it was hold on, sorry. You're good. Let's go right about there. Hey. Okay. Hey, yo. All right. Um yeah, that that um let's see, there we are. Yeah, the the river claims another, like again, you know, like that concept of you know, you're not the only person to deal with these problems and, yes. and even though, you know, we just came out of the other song where it's like the whole point of the, the song is the actually not even that song, but we just came out of a bunch of songs where we flat out said like, you know, mental seclusion and, and, mm -hmm. and all this stuff. Like a lot that of that is stuff, not the way I'm sorry. It's like, that is not the way <laughs> exactly, man. You know, it's like you, you, you seclude yourself. You end up, you know, isolating yourself from a lot of, a lot of things, and a lot of things that, and not even just people who can help you, but just a lot of different opportunities, you know, opportunity for help. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, for, for a lot of us in the metal community, that thing is metal, you know, mm -hmm. and the community that is metal, you know, that's why not to get too deep into that, into this concept, but that's one of the reasons why like the whole fucking just toxicity in this community is insane. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. We're all here for almost the same reasons. <laughs> How are we this toxic to each other? I, I don't get it, oh, but whatever. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to get off my, <laughs> soap. Get off my soap. I keep talking about my album. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, so like that's that's what that is, you know what I mean? Like it's it's mm -hmm. it's really a lot of like, like I because we even say it in the chorus, like I mean the pre-chorus, like are you hurt? You know, like did you lose your way? Like that, mm -hmm. that stuff is there, you know. Um, but then uh, we got to keep it in, in theme to the record, and you know it becomes dark again. Mm -hmm. uh, but that now transitions into um, oh, uh, just a piece of 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 kind of like insider stuff with that with this song too. The the solo that's in this song I, is. It was this close to being the pre-pro scratch version of the solo because the mm. solo was too perfect to re-record it. Um, I ended up re-recording it anyway, but it's not to me. I, I like I, everyone has heard the version that they heard, but to me, it's not as good as the pre-pro version of the solo. Interesting. The pre-pro version of the solo to me just it was the right solo for yeah. exactly what it was. But it was one of those kind of things where it, the magic was in the in the in the recording of it and like whatever. Right. Wherever I was when I tracked it, I might have been in my old apartment, whatever the case is, it was the right version of that solo. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, it was a little out of key. Oh, I realize I'm also, okay, that might be better too. I realize I was slightly panned to the right. Um, this it, The original solo was a little out of key because of certain sections and I was changing stuff and whatnot. Yeah. Whatever. But um, the version of the solo that's there, still dope. I still love it. It's still one of my yeah, favorite solos. It's ever great. Ever. Uh, thank you. It's one of those, mm -hmm. my favorite solos I've ever written. Um, I took some risks with it, especially that dive bomb at the end, which, I, you know, once I when I was looking at the notes and, like, learning all that stuff and learning key and learning notes and theory and stuff, I was like, that note is not right. But then as mm -hmm. I like, learning a little bit deeper, thankfully, I did keep learning and I didn't immediately change it. Yeah. I found out that it actually is accurate. It is actually yeah. accurate. But, um, yeah, that's just, like, some small details with that. Um, then the ending, um, the orchestral ending was originally there, but th I then bridged it into, um, Eldritch, which originally, yes. it um, technically speaking, the song that was supposed to come after this one is the last song, this is attenuation. Mm. Um, but Eldritch just, it, as I was going through and changing the track list, um, Eldritch just worked perfectly. Yeah. Um, the, the original version of this, which I'm going to shout out to my beautiful girlfriend, um, Kelly, she, um, that girl is, is the fucking best. She supports a lot of my ridiculous ideas. Mm -hmm. And one of my ridiculous ideas was when I was, before I got heavy into orchestration parts of like really heavy into it, <clears throat> the beginning of that song originally was just like these really dookie sounding strings. Yeah. Yeah. They were not well written at all. Cause I didn't know theory yet. I had the, some dookie ass samples that weren't that good, <laughs> but I had this crazy idea. I was like, yo, how cool would it be if we had an orc, a, a choir singing the, which is actually not in the song anymore, but there was a mm. vocal at the end of vicious attenuation, like that whole part where it's just the band riffing until the very end of the song. Yeah. Um, there was originally a long, clean vocal section of, on, uh, over that, and then there was like this, this like interweaved, like screaming vocal thing that I did. Yeah, but it just it just wasn't right. So mm. uh, we'll, we'll, next we'll time talk about in a minute. But um, that lyrical, the part lyrically, I had um, I had this idea of having a choir sing the lyrics in Italian yes. um, over this part, over the intro to um, um, Eldritch. 
uh, I don't know a choir that sings Italian. So I was like, I kind of sing. So mm. I write it out. I Google translated it. I had a friend of mine ask a different friend to to verify that it was accurate. Um, because he, my, my uh, I have a friend. We have a mutual friend that speaks Italian. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I had them uh, verify the the lyrical content was accurate, and then you know we went from there, and it was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna just track this crazy idea. Um, I did it, but it, it was missing something. I asked my girlfriend, I was like, babe, just do me this favor, just do me a favor. I need you to sing all this crazy shit with all these weird harmonies and shit. And she sang in the whole thing. I just listened to it for the first time in like, Whoa. Like a couple of days ago. It sounds like shit. <laughs> 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 oh dude it sounds whoa, whoa, so bad <laughs> it sounds so bad the idea is there it's mm -hmm. super there i i that's the thing i have all these crazy ideas i want to try wild shit yeah. um, and then i'll try it and realize it was bad <laughs> um the idea was super cool i think if i put it in the hands of people who are way more capable it might have been super awesome mm -hmm. um but it, it just, I, I, you know, I'm doing pre pro. I'm sitting in my fucking, in a, in one of the spare bedrooms in my house. And, and this is when I was in the, the room next to, next to this one. Uh, and I just called my girlfriend. I was like, all right, just roll with me. All right. Just, just do the sing when I'm singing, but sing it in this note. And I would hit, hit a note on my keyboard and then I would have her sing that note. Okay. Sing this note. And then we sing that. And I tuned the whole That's thing. That's cool. And it took forever. It took way too long just for me to listen to it like the next day. And then I was like, this is fucking horrible. <laughs> it's like, forget it. Um, so yeah, that ended up when I got when I got huh. better at uh orchestration and all that kind of stuff. I just wrote that that big long intro uh mm. that it is now. Um, we added that vocal part that that's in the beginning of the song that wasn't there. We added that pretty last minute um with that that ingest your final thoughts uh as I flay your mind mm. uh before your eyes. That lyric, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. It it just it's a lyric that has to do with the lore of the story. I just yes. really wanted to use the word flay because I just I just thought flay your mind sounds really yes. cool considering the concepts and the the theory the theory logic and I'm sorry the lore of the story that we're talking about flay yeah works perfectly but it also sounds super evil if you say flay anything mm -hmm. yeah I mean pff, dude mind flayer Stranger Things boom exactly uh, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, there's that. Um, but this this song is the song that has one of my favorite lyrical passages in the entire album. Okay. Uh, which I'll read here, which is... Um, so there's a lot of... Um, this one section has a lot of um, musical concepts attached to it, but I just, yeah. I just switched them um, to make them more lyrical. So it's... Um, this section is leading into the next section, but it's a cacophony of psalms sung loud by disciples voiced in demonic unison that then transitions into the next part which is my favorite part which is they play to you can you feel it the strings vibrating bows grace your end in harmonic enslavement listen intently for you must not miss it a symphony tuned beautifully to your doom mm. that is the one of my the i think it is the best thing i've ever written and it's probably my favorite thing i've ever written some um, slam poetry right there and it, it thank you um <laughs> it was like i i you know i i like i said i'm a huge fan of the the, the orchestra and classical mm -hmm. and choir and all that kind of stuff and i was like you know I, what ways can i say that in the story of all this right and it's like mm -hmm. you know we're talking about something that's happening while you're listening to it you know you're listening to the which there there may come a time where the orchestral version of this album comes out I, I it might that'd not, be cool it might not only because it's it was not technically complete mm -hmm. um, so they're like chunks of nothing <laughs> <In the, laughs> yeah it's like you got all this choir and orchestra and all this beautiful stuff and it's silent <laughs> you know it's just it just disappears uh because quite quite, going? Honest, quite honestly i didn't know what to do i would just be real mm -hmm. with you. I, didn't to, I didn't know what to do um, where now, now that I have more knowledge under my belt, the songs are now full songs. Uh, yes. So the next record may have a orchestral version. Um, but Sick. this one, it had like just that concept attached to it, right? Like this kind of like very musical thing. And then this is the chorus that surprisingly I haven't really heard much about because this was the chorus I was most nervous for because mm. uh, I'm singing real fucking high. Um but it's the, I can feel it as the terror slowly creeps around my head, infecting what's left of me, the abyss consuming. So mm -hmm. again, that, that those concepts, the terror. All back to the abyss. 
exactly um and then throughout the song you you'll get the you, directly after that at the cusp of the field you'll find a stairway down you know like, mm -hmm. we keep coming back to that stuff because i want that to stick you know what i mean i want those ideas to stick i want those lyrics lyrics to stick um because the last lyric of the album is a part of that um and then you know uh, another just a, another con conceptual piece being the dark night of the soul which is a very interesting concept to look into um that i won't spoil it's it's very very you know it's very introspective and very like it can be a it's a very personal thing mm. uh, which is why i i implore anyone who's listening to this as well as you as well if you have not yes. heard it, john um look at look into the dark night of the soul it's a very interesting it's a very interesting kind of like written concepts and stuff so um but yeah, and then you have the the whole end of the song, which is just like the kind of like the like now I'm telling you, you know, like from my perspective, um, being the um, it's a callback to a lyric earlier in the song, which I'll say, which was Adam's, which was um, have you begun the sermon, the elders transformation uh, carried out by the wraith devouring depression mm. um, when it comes back later in the song and I'm singing it, it's um, I have begun the sermon, my eldritch transformation guided through guided through by the wraith attuned to my depression so mm. it's it's that you know uh, yeah it's the the just a callback kind of thing yes but yes. it's also from a lyrical perspective it's the the literal representation of i am i am saying like i have you know i've begun the sermon i've i have fine i'm starting to accept it i'm starting to yes. realize that this is what this is what it is and it's being led by the wraith which we find out in you know in the story that the wraith is adam adam is the this other part of my mind is the wraith. Mm. you know we're just again we're we're assigning names to these things to make them more real yes uh, no matter how not real they are or how matter or no matter how real they may seem um when you you know it's like that concept with a with an animal if you name an animal you've now become connected to it even just by naming it that's why you'll yes. see it in farms like they won't name a cow or something because it's like no 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 it's not a pet it's food you know mm -hmm. it's it's not meant to be connected to but as soon as you name something you become connected to it yes um, so in this case it's like it's me naming the problems you know it's like that's that's essentially what that is so mm -hmm. being the wraith you know like that's a name whatever whether, whether it's a, a positive or a negative name it's a name nonetheless yes uh, and and it says in this case it's not devouring depression but it's attuned to my depression it's the same frequency as my depression it is yes like, you know so it's like that's what that is where when adam said it it's um it's devouring depression it's it's, it's consuming and it's it's living off of that um mm -hmm. but then in this case i say that it's it's attuned to it and then um before that sorry i, I jumped the gun being um, adam says uh the mouth of eternity consuming you know, because again, it's that like we want it to be eternity is this this like looming real thing in all of this lore and all of this stuff that's that's not real and stuff that's in your mind. The one thing that's real is that they, that that concept is whatever happens is for eternity. You know, it's like that's what that is. Um, and then uh, smooth transition into uh, court of the rate uh, court of the Trinity. Which that again is just like the the big monster of the song. It's fucking seven minute just beast mode the whole time. <laughs> um, I don't think the song. I don't think the song at any point drops below one hundred and twenty five or one hundred thirty BPM or two mm. two fifty for the drummers out there. Um, and it's and it, J Jesse could tell you that more specifically, but that song, um, it just it fuck it, it just beats you to hell the whole way. yeah. Um, lyrically, it's just a fucking unforgiving beast. I, I also apologize to Adam for this one because it's like, I was like, what if we do this and this and this and this and <laughs> kept going? So now when I listen to the song, I'm, like, I'm listening to the song and I'm just like, oh, man. And I, I, we're, <laughs> we're figuring out the set for live stuff and the guys put this song in there and I'm like, you guys are nuts. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we should play court. I was like, oh, God. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, this, this is going to be a fun when, when when the live stuff happens. It's going to be a fun set. Um, oh, I'm sure, man. Uh, yeah. So it's like this song is like again, we're getting closer and closer to the end. So like the very beginning of the song, the lyric being uh, uh, cling cling to the edge of the river, peer into the deep. You know, it's like you're you're there, bro. It's it's that's it. You're getting off that boat. You're here now. You are at the field. You are you are in this realm of whatever. You know what I mean? It's like peer into the deep know know your know what your existence was and know that you know whatever your whatever your plight whatever your whatever your uh, whatever you're going through is is there you yeah. know mm-hmm. um and then it's just this song is a little bit less um of a of a like deep dive personally and yeah like more of the lore of the story really mm-hmm. um, because this song was kind of written very early um and it, and it kind of just took shape and then i adjusted the lyrics over time um so that they fit the 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 story a little bit better um because this one like i said was was just a lot of cool concepts and different ideas that we that we had and um you know it being the longest song on the record if memory serves correctly it's the longest song on the record um, probably yeah yeah it just it just had like a lot of cool ideas that that i just wanted to throw yeah in um of course yes it's attached uh it has all of the same stuff there is one thing in there that is very personal to me and um i i I would go as far as to say me and the black community Mm. um being um it's a very weird way to say it but um there's a lyric in here that says blades will swing attaching pain to your ancestry um and that's talking about generational trauma um right you know, I, I not to get too too deep into you know, uh, black culture and black history and stuff, but it that that specifically is speaking to um, generational trauma and that concept of generational trauma that mm-hmm. something you know like slavery, for example, was yes something that I don't give a fuck who you are, no matter how much you want to try to forget it or try to pretend it didn't happen, it yeah. is one of the worst atrocities that this country has ever fucking done. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and the, the and then that can transition not only just to the black community, but every single people uh, yeah. that have been fucking persecuted and been put down by by America. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's just what it is. You know, yeah. Uh, like who you are, I don't care where you're from or whatever, you, whoever you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, it's that. That's what that is. Uh, that is talking about the the uh, slavery and the different pieces of generational trauma and and you know racism and things prior to the the civil rights movement and then even things after um so you know like people want to say that oh don't get political whatever like that i'm this to me is not political this to no. me is about deep rooted and deep yes. existence of mm-hmm. problems yeah uh, but that's just you know one lyric in the whole entire album that has any sort of potential political fucking uh yeah uh, dude whatever I, it's it's your thing. You're doing your thing. <laughs> you know, it's like, look, bro, I, I'm a black man in a in a very white ran uh, genre. Yeah, it's gonna come into it. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna mm-hmm. say something. It's just gonna happen. Utilize um, your platform. Utilize your your ability to make art and write music and fucking represent your culture. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Um, and you know, like that, that's where that comes from, but I, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't, I really don't like getting political and metal. It's just, it's, right. it's something that's just to me is unnecessary, but you know, mm-hmm. like, this to me is not something that's political. It's, it's no. more about like just human rights. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, like the chorus again is just a good reference, uh, like fire, like fire from the old gods, you know, mm-hmm. it's just different stuff like that. Just like re- referring throughout the album, uh, mm-hmm. And kind of tying the story together, and less more of the personal connection that we have to the whole entire record. And then, like, yeah. like I said, right. this was this was the one that almost broke Jesse. Uh, again, shout out to my boy. That's he's my man's, and he got through it. But I remember, dude, that there were a couple of. I think we took four days to record the song. Three days, maybe. Oh shit! Um, and we, and it was eight hour days, except for the last day was like ten and a half, almost eleven <sighs> hours of that kid just fucking playing. Shh. It's straight. He didn't fucking eat, dude. I, all he did, I'm not kidding, and I'm not trying to sensationalize the story. All he did was play drums, eat protein bars, and pee. That was it. That's all he did the whole time was drink. Bogey to his craft. He drank some red juice. It was like, I think it was pre-workout. I don't know what it was. He was just drinking some red <laughs> shit, eating protein bars, and, and he would just get up every, like, three hours three or mm-hmm. four hours to go pee it's like bruh i peed 16 times in the last 32 minutes like why why are you going to the bathroom <laughs> once every 
three or five, <laughs> three to five hours. But he he didn't want to get up from that kit, man. Mm -hmm. He was determined to get through that track. And then every night, and it was just me and him, me him, and the guy recording the uh, uh, the engineer Chris um, recording that that track, uh, recording the drums. And we got to the last day of that song, and we were like, okay, we can't, we got to finish the song because we got fucking. This was, I think, the second song we recorded. It was like we got fucking seven more songs to record, bro. We gotta get through mm -hmm. this. We get to the last day and we're on, like I said, we're on like hour 10, hour 11. And and, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, it was the day before. Sorry about that. It was no, the, end of the, last, the second day or third, whatever. He comes to this, he comes to their control room. He's sitting on the couch. I'm sitting on the chair and he's just like, he's like hanging his head because he's just like, <laughs> he's like, dude. I And he said, he was like, I'm yo, done. he literally said to me, he was like, yo, I'm sorry, bro. I was like, oh, fuck that. Uh uh, no, sorry. You are doing something that I can't believe you're doing, which is playing this shit. Mm hmm. Fuck, uh, fuck that sorry sorry nothing you're fucking killing it you're you're at, we're halfway through the song you know and he's and it's it's what i was talking about you know you're you're your your own you worst, are your own worst critic mm -hmm. he was just beating himself up that whole time he's like mm -hmm. I, him apologizing to me was was almost like you know maybe i'm not good enough to do this i was like ah uh -uh, fuck that yeah you are if you weren't and i said it to him like if i'm a vi I, I something my i say to my girlfriend all the time she hates it if if this wasn't the case this wouldn't be the case you know what i mean mm -hmm. so I, I said to him, i was like if i didn't think you could do this shit dude you wouldn't be in the band i i know you can do this and that's yeah. the reason why i have no fucking i am not worried about this mm -hmm. i was like you don't need to be worried about me thinking you can do it or not you know fuck that you i know you can do it so at that point let's figure out let's get you let's get it done you know right um but yeah that was that song um it was this song's fucking crazy it's really really wild um there's some stuff i wish i was able to go back and do over um vocally there's some weird stuff i didn't really like um but you know it happens and then yeah uh, there's some different stuff i'm gonna do for the next record and different mix ideas and stuff can't um, wait to hear it man just committing to different styles right you know yeah because i i there's i'm screaming in this song but i didn't I wasn't confident in my screaming for it. So I, I, um, I layered it with my, my like kind of grittier vocal. Yeah. Um, and I just, it just didn't sound right. And I should, I just should have left it as screaming, but I, you know, you live and you learn. Um, which that then ties into the next track, which is, um, Weep into the Abyss. Weep into the Abyss. This is Weep into the Abyss for it hears you not. I like these track titles. I really do. They're a lot more uh, theater friendly. Like this could be, this could be a Royal Albert Hall deathcore album, and that's what's really cool about like this new renaissance of Black and Deathcore, and Symphonic Black and Deathcore, all that. It's great. It's so good for the genre, and it's everything that I've ever wanted to do as a musician. So it's great to see other bands kind of like helping the scene become more comfortable with that. Which that's just this piano ballad. I just I was I had this idea. I wanted to just play a really soft piano ballad, uh, mm. and I was sitting here on my little tiny little keyboard, my forty nine key keyboard, which I need to get a new one. <laughs> now I can actually play the piano. <laughs> need a bigger fucking keyboard, which I'm working on. I'll get it eventually. But um, I just wrote that idea out. I was just playing it, and then there is a recording that is in that. Um, in the background of that whole thing it's super saturated super saturated mm. with verb, so it's very hard to understand but it's about the s word it's about it's about that whole thing uh um, right it's an actual interview um of someone asking someone you know like you know you they survived and it was like you know why did you try that why did you do that and i remember that too i recall it, in that. there it's a little rough to hear the different pieces of it of course but i, I it yeah. was louder in the original mix but I, I didn't want it to be so in your face right uh, you know because it's it's that's a heavy subject man back that's of your mind subject. exactly right. 
mm-hmm. I wanted it to be more of a voice in the background, you know. And That's so weird too. I'm like, this sounds like an interview. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy, man. That's cool. Exactly what it is. It's just it's a it was meant to be a a transitional section in the record to get to the end. You know, it's yes, it's because that is the more hopeful part of the album to be quite transparent. It's like mm. that that one single section is the only section in the album where we talk about this heavy ass topic and it has a positive outcome. Mm. Um, and then that goes into the next song, which for no, us, however, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We get into the next song, vicious attenuation. <laughs> reference to um uh, uh court of the trinity um because it's it's there's a part in the middle of that song where, where we say um uh fuck where is it Oops, it's, sorry. you're good uh i don't remember where it is but the lyric is um it's up here it is uh, oh, god damn it, the song's so long I thought it would be way easier to find this because there's a lyric before it that I cannot remember. But it, yeah, I, I, I really can't find this part. Oh, here it is. Oh, yep, here it is. Okay, it's uh, yeah, it's deforming so beautifully ceremoniously separating the horror the terror the abyss vicious attenuation of the whole mm. it's saying that it the the terror the horror the terror and the abyss that's the trinity the vicious attenuation of the whole is essentially saying that all three of those things being kind of melded into one thing is a violent act mm-hmm. uh, but it's you know you get to the 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 vicious attenuation of the whole thing being it's violently putting those things together um and it's gonna be a mess <laughs> you know like that's pretty much what it is yeah uh, but yeah we get to the last song on the record um which is is essentially that you know it's 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 the last stop on it's the last stop of eternity, it's the last stop to eternity mm-hmm. uh, and then you get to the entire thing and and it's and it's just talking about the the concept of adding that adding another name to the book yeah you know and that's that's and we say that in a lot of different ways like the 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 part here is um fractured bones lay at my feet to the ledger your name must be added you know and it's like there's nowhere left to go the field has claimed yet another prepare your sight for what is left to come you know it's 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 super this song is extremely bleak yeah extremely as it should be with a tragedy you exactly. can't exactly like have a tragedy tragedy hopeful like no yeah. this is not, there's no redemption arc here for our character exactly exactly and i feel like um and this is the this is the <clears> song <throat> that in the chorus i'm doing uh some screaming vocals so um i start the screaming and then adam does the highs so when you listen to the chorus the yeah lower, the lower mids is me and then um the higher vocal is adam uh, sweet and yeah this song this song is just is is super fucking it's super super bleak you know as it it should be yeah the uh i i think some of the more um directly darker lyrics um for example like the uh this part uh what's left to feel when nerves exist no more the terror you face has been written in lore congruent with the pain you chase i am here to rip you down from grace um it's it's a lot of like very obvious like yo nah this shit's bad you know mm-hmm. uh then we get to one of my favorite parts of the entire record which was one of my favorite things to record um which mm. was um one of adam's last last vocals in the set in the whole song which is the whole ending um the uh oh no that's my lyrics that i deleted wait where are they where are they where are they it is here um uh darkness is wait where is it do i not have it written here oh yeah 
No, yeah, it's here. Okay, there is nowhere left to go. The field is claimed. Yeah, it's the same part. Claimed another. Prepare your mind for what is uh, for what is to come. Uh, then it's um, prepare your mind for what is left to come. The only thing left is the end. Um, let my darkness in and embrace the terror. Mm -hmm. um, Adam did that in one take, and it was it was wild because like when you listen to that part, like as soon as it as soon as the part drops is like. Uh, when the tempo drops down and the, yeah. the part comes in, um, mm -hmm. Adam, Adam did that. Did the from the part where he says when he starts off and he says "added" and it's like a really long scream, and then it gets built with these other screams around it. That yeah, added. I remember uh, that. Obviously, not the ones built around, but that main line from then on is one take, and I'll never forget it. It was again, you know, the de my room was set up a little differently at the time, but uh, my desk was against this wall. And Adam was actually in this corner, and I had like I had this like uh, I have a like a photo rig mm -hmm. that set up the um, the what's it called the the fucking the stands for it. It's like a yes for, for a backdrop. Mm -hmm. I set the stands for it, and I just wrapped Adam in like this like makeshift vocal booth because I didn't want to put him into the in my closet that I have here that I can empty out and use for vocals because I I wanted him in the room so that we mm -hmm. can like kind of feed that energy. Yes. Um. And as he was doing that part, and I like we the re recording this album was very interesting because we were trying different things and it just didn't work. And we were like two days in and like the vocals weren't coming out the way we wanted it to. But you know, we were trying to record a different way and it was just more taxing. Um, so we just decided to go back to our old way of just we get an idea, let's record the vocal exactly how we have the idea instead of trying to say, all right, let's do all the highs now, let's do all the lows now. Um, but he started this part and uh, he did he did pieces of it and we did it in chunks and i was like yeah it still doesn't sound that good it still doesn't have the the emotion that we're looking for it doesn't have that like almost desperation that i'm looking for um so i was like you know what dude just fucking blast it just hit it whole thing just hit the whole fucking thing mm -hmm. um and he tried it Still didn't work, oddly enough. And then, you know, we kind of just sat here for a second. We were a little upset that it wasn't happening. And then he was like, fuck it. Let me just give it another one. He threw the headphones on, went behind, went behind that mic. I just hit record. And I was like, cool. Just let it run. And he just fucking rips it. And then the last scream is super long. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we finish it and I hit stop, like my girlfriend from the kitchen, she screams, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. I was like, that's how you know it was right. Because <laughs> she's been here the whole time. She's been listening to this dude scream with no music because it's just us in a room. We have mm -hmm. headphones on. So all she hears is silence and then the loudest fucking screaming on the planet. <laughs> and then silence <laughs> and then more screaming. It's just so it's <laughs> super random. But that was a long section. And mm -hmm. it was, the whole thing is a high. Mm -hmm. And he is I he's singing it practically. He's yeah. fucking going for it. Yeah, and he, and he got to the end of it. I hit stop. <laughs> she just from the other room. Oh my god, <laughs> that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> and I said to him, I was like, That's the keeper. That's how you know, mm -hmm. right there, dude. Where somebody else is like, holy shit, what mm -hmm. was that? And she's what she's, was that? she's been here the whole week. She's been hearing him do the vocals. Mm -hmm. When you get that kind of reaction out of someone who's been hearing it for a while, they're like, yeah. Where someone who, again, not really into metal. My girlfriend's mm -hmm. getting into it now, but she's not really into it that much. Um, and when you get that reaction from someone who's not into it but can understand and respect it, yeah, that's when you know, all right, cool, yep, that's it. And then we get we hit the very end of the record, which is the last and most depressing line. So accept the rot. Mm -hmm. And then you get the the beautiful fucking nylon guitar, which again, you know, I, I wanted to I wanted to end the record the same way I started it. In a way that you don't expect. You expect it to yeah. be a big grandiose ending and then it's over. You know, it's like yeah. big grandiose ending and then ah, really soft acoustic guitar that's also being played under the sound of wind, like just soft wind howling through a house. Yeah. Pain. You know, nah. it's just like that just that empty feeling. You know what I mean? Like that's mm. so it's just like I didn't want to try to re re reference the intro again or use the same musical themes. It was like yeah. I'll take the same concept. The the continual theme from the intro and the ending mm -hmm. is, is the rain and all that kind of stuff. But yes. the, the melody is different, obviously. But then the instrument is is it's way less, it's way more stripped down. Where the intro is this big or, or, or orchestral epic, 
the ending is a big orchestral epic that drops to a just a single nylon guitar. Right. And then, Sick. And then we've and then we get the end of that, and we get that nice little ending chord, and they would yeah. And that was eternity. 